Whenever feasible, one should always try to eat the root. Would you join me at the table? Welcome to Eat the Rootcast, a podcast about Hannibal and the works of Thomas Harris. Notice I didn't say NBC because it is no longer NBC's Hannibal. Oh, yeah. even though it's or because it's already aired, it's no longer. I don't. I'm not. I'm not letting them take credit anymore. <gasps> oh, I'm done. Well, okay. I'm done. Because I think legally they still. Own do they? Do they? Yeah. Do they want it? That's the question. <laughs> They don't seem to want it, as no. far as I've noticed. It, it, but it's so, it's the red-headed stepchild. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, they, they It's they, the move they, it to Saturday it, nights and maybe, maybe run a, a football game instead. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's, you know, we, we don't, we don't really need it. I'm Cooper, and tonight I have with me. Hi, I'm Miko. And this is Ophelia. <laughs> and tonight, we're not talking about an episode, because obviously we've talked about all the episodes. Oh, there are no more. And uh, this is not the first Eat the Rudecast to come after the episode. So if it seems a little weird that we're talking as though this was the first time we haven't talked about an episode, it's because we're recording this one first and the other yeah. one later. We're being timey wimey. In real life, this is the first time we're talking. <laughs> this is. Yes. This Since is the, the first ep- yeah. post series Season. episode yeah. of yes. Eat the Rudecast. But we, we have a special guest for our first scheduled <laughs> so tiny, to be tiny, released wobbly, wobbly. so we so it was, well something. what we're doing tonight is we're talking about red dragon the film um and you know film loosely uh, uh, using that term but yes. uh we we wanted to have manhunter be first and then the anthony hopkins lecture trilogy in the middle mm-hmm. and then speaking of redheaded stepchilds that movie at that the end. That we haven't watched yet. Yes, yes. That we haven't watched yet. We will watch we it. We will. There we has been some like discussion it. of just drinking <laughs> through the entire oh. thing. I want to spend as little time with Hannibal Rising as I can. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I shouldn't prejudge it. But I know but you I, are. I have, and, yeah. I'm, I'm, and <laughs> it, the it best part is, I know I'm right yeah. about it. And, and I'm just hoping that it's so bad I'll love it. Because there are movies that so are too. so bad, I I think it, they're awesome. What is it? Troll Two. Oh, God. <laughs> so bad. Oh, you love that, it. That, no, that, that was that not the first one that came that's to a mind. Whole but... other realm. <laughs> yeah. Troll Two is just a step above the room. <laughs> oh yes, but there is one that's I the would room say is it's so a bad big that step you love above it. the room. I've seen <laughs> both of these movies. Uh, not a... Okay. Well, I don't know what it's a big step closer to. It's just above the room because the room is terrible. Well, let's talk about Red Dragon. Yes. And we recommend, I mean, you don't have to, but we recommend going and watching the film before you listen to this episode because, unlike our show, our, the Eat the Rootcast proper, we are not going to go scene by scene, line by line, and take you through the film. So you can't really glean the film without having actually seen it. No. And and you'll just get more enjoyment from seeing it. So go watch the film. Go. We'll, we'll wait. Go now. We'll, we'll be right we'll here. We'll be here when you're done. I'm going to I'm just going to say I like Red Dragon more than Manhunter. Ooh, I do not. Do yeah. not. I I I what's interesting because there's plus and minuses to both. True. I can't even say I think, you know, on the scales <laughs> I'm about equal. Okay. Because there are some things I like, some characters are better characterized in Red Dragon than they are in Manhunter. And they're not dealing... Our, our main characters, in fact. Yeah. Are... But there's but then there's like some of the over-the-top stuff or st- people who aren't acting at all in Red Dragon. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're better There's a lot of people who Hunter, are not where, acting. Yeah, there, there is. There's a lot of non-acting. And I'm like, what like, are you doing, guys? Yeah. I know you can do like better than this. Phantom Menace level yes. non-acting. <laughs> like they were directed to yeah. be dry. Well, and that that's, I mean, really, it's funny because when you think about this, if you're not in the film industry mm-hmm. and you think about really how much influence does a director have on a project, if the actors are talented... And really, you don't need to look any further than The Phantom Menace to see what happens when talented actors meet a really, you know, George Lucas is a terrible director. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's great story guy. Oh, yeah. Terrible at most everything else. Yeah. 
He so, should never direct so his own work. So seeing Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman yeah. all fail spectacularly Poor to do Natalie. anything she of got, value. She got the brunt of it. She oh, did. she did. She's you know, tour de force actress, has done amazing work. Mm-hmm. And if you can't get that out of her... That is not her. Mm. But unfortunately, that's, that's what people see on the screen. Right. And if you're not in the industry, the first thing you're going to do is blame the actor. Exactly. And But the rest of us knew. It's like, no, 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 no. Those people should have been like amazing us on the screen. But sometimes even the best of actors, if they're not getting what they need right. from a director, especially when they're acting to blue screen mm-hmm. on dots on people's faces – it becomes really difficult. That's and unfortunately, when... the public is what's going to determine who gets billed in the next movie. And unfortunately for her, that ruined a lot of prospects because people don't want to put you in their movie mm. after the public sees you in a negative light as a bad actress. Yeah, even though or she's actor. Like, done amazing you know, work. It's almost as though you two don't want to talk about Red Red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> are we, are really? we digressing? I mean, I mean there's a, there's been a lot of conversation Gee. about things that are not Red Dragon. <laughs> They're related, <laughs> okay. honestly. They're related. Let, but back to... Yes, back to okay. Talk about the fun. actors rain actually the, in the film the, we're talking about. The pseudo equality that I seem to have with both of these things. In. Yeah, I, I do. Like, I think there are plus, there's so many plus and minuses, and each film falls short in, in such a great yeah, in, in a, a great way, way, but in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Exactly. It's really hard for me to say that any one of them is better than the other. And and because Manhunter was my introduction to the whole thing, I think I have it's not that it makes it my favorite movie, but I think I give it a little bit more leeway because, mm-hmm. you know, that was like my first introduction to the whole storyline. You know, I actually got to see that before Silence came out. Sure. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it in a, in a theater, but I watched it on TV and thought it was really interesting. And I actually hadn't made the connection when Silence came out because it had been so long. That that it was uh, a follow-up. That it was yeah. a follow-up. It wasn't until later on where someone was like, oh my God. And it was some one of those movies that we just like to watch because we like Brian Cox and sure. it, it has a lot of good actors in it. It's just dated cuz because it nothing, was made in the 80s, it was made in the 80s which is an era of just being dated by existing. totally yeah but what i find interesting about red dragon is that they tried to do a period a, a quote on air, oh, air quoting a quote on period to say about piece that. Yes. That fails spectacularly, at least in my eyes, as a historian and a designer. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, well, let's let's start with what are what are the pros of this film? Not not necessarily mm. versus mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Manhunter, because we should take each of these things as their own independent entity. I mean, it's a little harder with Red Dragon because it's specifically a let's do the thing that we did wrong the first time. Let's do it right this time. Mm-hmm. But we essentially had that with this past half season of Hannibal. Yeah. Is we had another version, a let's get it right, that I I feel like it gets right so much more than both of these films, but at the same time, it really jettisons about half the adaptation. Yeah. Which is weird because there has never been a full adaptation of Red Dragon. Nothing mm, no. has decided to adapt this phenomenal book yeah. from start all to way, finish yeah. with all of the stuff with inside. All the stuff. I wonder what, why people don't... Well, I guess it is a very meaty book. And uh, Thomas Harris gives a, all of his characters a, a great amount of for lack of better term, screen time. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's really well developed. Pe- mm-hmm. It isn't, hey, let's go get that guy that's going to find out uh, uh, how to get this print. Right, and, right. you know, forensics guy comes in yeah, right. and does it. Or it's it's somebody... You learn that, about everybody. You learn about everybody. Yeah. Every single character has a backstory. And it's kind of poetically written the way he talks about each person. And yeah. maybe that's overwhelming. When when people are trying to put that when they're trying to cut down, to, but I, I, I feel like that's a bad excuse. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not good enough. Sorry, Ophelia is cutting this film no slack. Apparently, no. No. I didn't say it was a good excuse. Right, right. But I, but knowing how people in the industry sometimes look at stuff like this, and knowing you can't put every word on a page on a Ugh. screen, right. Don't get unless me started. you're doing. <laughs> A mini series. Are you going to talk about another film instead? I'm. I. I almost <laughs> did. I'm no, not instead, going to. Let me. Let me ask this. Ophelia, name one thing 
that you liked about this film? I knew you were going to do this because the second you said, let's look at the positive, I'm like, oh boy. I really, no, I mean, there are positives. Hey, there can, are positives. I can list many things that I like about this okay. film. I'll start. Danny Elfman's score yes. was really <laughs> wonderful. You said that when the movie first started. He's going to be the best part about this movie. <laughs> yes. Well, he's also first on my list, just is why I'm starting with him. Um, I really like Anthony Hopkins' performance in this. I mean, he's obviously older Lecter. Not his fault. Yes. He's obviously right. put on a good deal of weight. Probably not his fault. I don't want to fat shame the man. <laughs> but he, uh, we, we talked about he's got a little bit of Kelsey Grammer as uh, Latter-day Fraser Crane syndrome. You know, yeah. when, he'd, when he'd he when he come out of the in. bedroom uh, shirtless for whatever reason, he's all barrel chest and very little stomach. And it's just like, we know you're, we know you're sucking it in. Yeah. It's okay. We can tell. And at one point, it did look like he was wearing a corset under his... Uh, under his, um, he had spanks. His on. blue uh, jumpsuit, blue hospital <laughs> jumpsuit. I mean, it just looked like, but, but it's not his fault. Yeah. And really, this was a big response to the reaction to Hannibal, which is a very divisive movie. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people felt that he went way too big. I happen to adore his performance in Hannibal, <laughs> but this is far, far closer to who he was in Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Okay, I found something. Okay. Um, it, it's going to focus on teeth. So, uh, so <laughs> feel free. Some of the th no CGI teeth. There were yes, no the entire positive, film. Positive, right? Positive there were there were entire none. Entire film, CGI. not one single CGI tooth. Well, there's a scene where they zoom in. Um, it looks like it's just like it, I, I don't know how to describe the shot because I don't have the right words to, to well, use for it. But it, and then I, I it's, can help you. it's a zoomed in old photograph, black and white. Um, but there's a bit of weird shading on the teeth of the grandma. So there's a, a picture of grandma that oh. they like, they, it, I don't know if it starts a scene or closes out a scene. I think it starts a scene where it's, you know, super zoomed in and you just see like the mouth and then it pans out and you see the whole picture sitting on like a, a, a dresser or something. I think it was on the, the nightstand. The I think nightstand. that was after um, yeah. Dollaride and Reba. Got it on, got it on. Yeah, he got it on it, off camera. Yeah. Off, off ca oh, right. Yeah. No, no. No pure mood no. sex music for you. And, and no, we don't get to see, you know, any of the sex. It's just implied. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a little bit chilling because you see the, the, the like, the crooked i don't want to say snaggle tooth but i feel like that's the only thing that's that i can okay. use to describe accurately it. described right the the crooked we're not grandma the... shaming it's okay <laughs> and, well, and and fa in fairness grandma feels, sounds like a monster feels like you something shame that you, would, all you, want. you would taunt a, a poor child with bad teeth so i don't want to say the words but i already <laughs> did anyway the the messed up teeth and they're a slightly different color Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure can't actually happen when you develop black and white film. No, it, that would have been kind of looked, digitally post -processed. looked a little yeah. greenish yeah. brown and the, like zoomed in on the teeth, and I felt like that told so much. Mm -hmm. Like the teeth that you could tell because they'd already gone over the teeth, they've already gone over his bite, they've already shown the dentures, and at least I think they had at this point. Yes, I think they did early, and then they just the show the picture of the grandma. Yeah. wearing the teeth and you can just glean so much information off of seeing that mm -hmm. that uh was lacking in Hannibal the the television series yeah. we didn't we didn't get any of the backstory i think if just something like this had been slipped in mm -hmm. it it could have told at least a, a fraction yeah. of the story we could have went like oh okay that's fucked up you yeah. know like we don't really have to know all the details to know that there's something messed up between dollar hide and grandma right. yeah and and they did do that uh, well here because they didn't dwell on it they didn't no. we, we didn't have to do a whole entire flashback no nope. that really explained it you know everything it was little things uh, and the, and ellen burston yes as, as the grandma voice. as yes. the voice of grandma which was wonderful yeah uh though that scene was a little bit of exposition -y. it was just like oh oh yeah this is this is what we call dialogue with air quotes yeah it, it was not actual dialogue but that's all you know they were able to do it without actually like having to film the scene right it, it was just like the memory of it mm -hmm. of of and the, the, the voices they showed and, the children's drawing like yeah his drawings and um and, so they were able to kind of give you the backstory yeah. without giving you all of the information and it was just enough to know so that at the end you get that he was 
really messed up by his grandma. Yeah. He has an issue with this. And we're, we didn't get that at all in Hannibal. It, yeah. it, there wasn't any kind of indication. Or in Manhunter. Yeah. yeah. There's really, There's uh, really we, we have no idea it. of what right. Dollar Ice's backstory know why was. He's, he, he yeah. is the way he is. And everyone seems to be fine with not knowing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know the, the details. But I, it was nice as a reader and wanting to see more of what's in the book. It was yeah. a nice way of handling that, of of being able to, to apply it. They apply it a little too much in the end, and I kind of was yeah, was not too happy yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's nice to know what's going on in the mind of the killer. And you know? I also, I do kind of have a, a gripe about, I don't think that that information would be in the book. I don't either. I don't think... And we're specifically yeah, talking about uh, Will Graham's very, very, very poor parenting and ill-advised gambit here at yes. the end, yeah. where Dollaride has his son with a with a big old shard of of mirror. I think he might he might have held on to maybe his own drawings, perhaps or something like that. I but I don't think they would put, put it in, in the murder number. book. No, no. not in the that, murder book. The, the, the murder book. The Dollaride's <laughs> big book of murder. Big, big book, book of, of murder. murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, not in the murder book. I was I was right there with you on that. When when he opened it up and there like was it might all be in a filing cabinet somewhere the diary stuff him. I was like I could see that being in a separate book yeah yeah because yeah. this book is the book of the red dragon right, yeah exactly and there should be nothing about his his weaknesses no there. that because that's what yeah. torments him so he would want to forget that yeah. he right wouldn't he would share he that. would want to assume the red dragon on top of all of that to, and it's to worth mentioning it. that this is in no way the book. Yeah. Right. This right. climax no, no, no. is no. It's not. Is no. A, no one wants to do the book a ridiculous. Climax, really. uh, well, I mean, the, yeah. the book climax. To we we'll probably have talked about this next week, last yeah. week, and the Manhunter podcast. Next week, uh, yes. But the book climax ends with the you know Will Graham gets stabbed in the face, mm-hmm. surprised by Dollaride, stabbed mm-hmm. in the face, who then goes into the house and Molly winds up killing him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is amazing. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's even it's amazing considering the time that this book was written to. Yeah, mm-hmm. to empower Molly. Well, right, so much. right off the bat, uh, d- um, Thomas Harris demonstrates that he really likes strong female characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's debatable whether he continues to like strong female characters, considering the arc of Clarice Starling. But yeah, it's really impressive at the beginning. I guess if, if you look at it through the the lens of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and and what other people were doing, and the environment that you're in, the fact that he has anything that is uh, that creates strong, independent women who aren't leaning on men for support, mm-hmm. who aren't uh, self rescuing are, princesses, ex- yeah. exactly, and aren't characterized as being hypersexualized, mm-hmm. or you know, the way the women are even described in a, in a lot of this, from Molly to Clarice. Um, very, very like strong, feminine, yet not, you know, uh, sexy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or they can be athletic and strong and, and independent. Molly is a great character. Um, they really get into Will and Molly's relationship a lot more, which I understand is too much to go into in a film. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was nice that, that you got to see where she, what she was struggling with. And the choices that she had to make and how Will has to deal with that while he's trying to find a killer. Mm -hmm. His marriage is falling apart. Um, But in that, uh, you know, writing this at that time period, you didn't see a whole lot. Uh, It was always, you know, you know, pretty girly, sidekicky kind Mm of women who, even when they were independent and strong, usually came across as girly. Well, and, um, you know, occasionally, the Molly spot. of the book does come in in that whole needy category yeah. that we were praising the show for avoiding. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this this movie uh, does pretty well avoiding that aspect yeah. of Molly. You know, she's mm-hmm. a little concerned, but she's also supportive. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mary Louise Parker plays Molly in the film mm-hmm. and does a fine job, mm-hmm. not a great job. And she does have her her standard breakdown at the end of the film after yeah. killing Dollaride, though with a very nice headshot. <laughs> yes. So she and Will must have been out on that cattle ranch range mm-hmm. for hours upon yeah. hours or she's upon a fast hours. Learning. Well, well may, maybe that. Natural. 
I mean, would it have killed them to have her hook dollar eyed with a fishing pole? Would it have killed them to do that? That is one of the best moments, and that that is the most memorable thing for me from the book Red Dragon, from the first time I read it, was Molly hooking dollar eyed's face with a fishing but, pole. But the the but the fishing pole has much more meaning too. Yeah, because we've gone through that storyline with her, uh, a lot of her memories of her. Uh, deceased husband coming back when they go back to the in-laws and that's when will feels like he's losing them mm. and uh willie or wally or josh or josh in this yeah film. josh in this film uh you know willie is reacquainted with the memories of his father yeah. and his father and uh, his, his grandfather the father-in-law gives him the um uh, the fishing pole that was his father's. And this is really hard for Will. They fish together. Will, uh, Willie comes back with this fishing pole and does not want to use the one that, that Will has given him, mm-hmm. even though it's better. He'd rather use the one that doesn't work because it belongs to his father. Uh, the whole thing about baseball, that is also a callback to um, uh, you know, to little Willie's um, dead father. So the fishing pole thing in the book is so much more strong mm. and meaningful because they've already had all this stuff happening. You've seen the, the you've read the interaction between Will and Willie about the fishing pole and, and how he feels like they're slipping through his fingers. He's changed so because of what's going on. And, uh, you know, uh, Molly doesn't quite feel safe. She almost stays in Oregon. She has a job, yeah. but then decides to come back. So, Using that fishing pole really it's means catharsis. something. It, it's, it is. It's, it's good character development. Exactly. But if you can't, if you don't go into that in the movie, it's it's still it, a cool moment. Yeah. <laughs> so you just Whether want it for the character cool development factor. or not, it's like, a she should awesome just pick moment. up a random fishing pole I mean, and hook him yeah. in the seriously, face. Seriously, this climax and uh, Dollaride knows where they are. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. he's followed them upstairs. Yeah, Molly's coming up the stairs, and Will doesn't think to say, "Hey, Molly, he's at the top of the stairs." He knows where they are. Yeah. They're not hiding from him. Yeah. Why is this a suspenseful? Why is Dollarite allowed to get behind Molly? Yeah, what mm-hmm. the fuck is that? There's a lot of what the fuck is that there, in this yeah. movie, <laughs> unfortunately. It, it, is, it is bad directing. It's, yeah. it's not being aware of your space, and it's really not being aware of the story you're telling. No. Yeah. And I, I think that is the, the biggest issue this film has, mm. is Brett Ratner is a mimic. Mm-hmm. You know, he, was, he did a very good job replicating the look of Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. This oh, movie yeah. looks like Silence of the Lambs with the exception of it being shot in 2, 3, 5 to 1 aspect ratio when Silence is 1, 8, mm-hmm. 5. But otherwise, it looks like it. The, the, Baltimore, the Baltimore State Hospital was no longer allowed to be used for filming whatever that building was. Oh. It, either that or it was gone. So that shot... Yeah. Is from Silence of the Oh, Lambs. that's interesting. What did they, what building did they use? I, I don't know. For, but it was uh, it's no longer available. Is that was it an LA location or was that like a if if I know Demi, it was probably a East Coast location. Oh, an East Coast location. Yeah. Only because I know I was wondering if it's a uh there was a hospital that everybody used to use in LA and then it was bought out by a Christian organization. Uh-huh. You couldn't shoot there anymore. <laughs> so I'm I I was wondering because I can't remember what it looked like in in silence, uh, but if it was an East Coast location, um, then it probably wasn't that. But it really feels like, you know, he's very close, mm-hmm. and he thinks he's nailed it. Oh yeah, you know that's that's what this film feels like to me is someone who thinks I have made a film that is as least the equal to Silence of the yeah. Lambs. Oh, you can totally tell that, and it just. And he's got a lot of support on that front. There's you great think actors in this. Movie. Edward Norton would be supporting, but you know, to the to the point where Brett Ratner says Hannibal is going to rattle you in this interaction, mm-hmm. and um, Edward Norton says, "No, you know what? Will Graham's a seasoned pro. He wouldn't be rattled by and uh, by Hannibal Lecter. You know, maybe we'll just give me some pit stains, and then it'll yeah. look like I was sweaty." It, Wait, is that what happened? That is exactly what happened. Because I remember the pit stains. Yeah. But yeah. So that is. So I didn't know that that was the 
interchange. I th- I think the director should have put his foot down at that point. Like, no, well, no. you know what? A director with experience You've and a director stabbed. who wasn't afraid of his actors probably mm-hmm. would. Oh. And it probably would have uh, given us a thing? better uh, better performance. Well, the, I mean, the bottom line is Will Graham is not interesting in this film at no. all. Nope. He is no, very not. damaged Deadfish. and interesting. I mean, our... Our perception of Will Graham is very different now. Yeah. Before this mm-hmm. series, William Peterson was the interesting Will Graham. William Peterson was the weird Will no, Graham. The William book Peterson Will Graham was, was the poor. Interesting. Well, mm-hmm. uh, yes, of the of the. <laughs> films. We're talking about the, about the Will Graham in my head. The Will yeah. Graham in the book, it's not. He's nowhere near as damaged as the Will Graham we have come to love. Yes. But he's damaged. Yes. yes. The Will Graham in the film, sort of crazy. This Will Graham. Bland walked out of a yeah. C- uh, CSI type procedural show, mm-hmm. and and not even as interesting. You know, William Peterson's character on CSI far more right. interesting <laughs> than this Will Graham. Yeah, it, it kept sound, sort of bothering me about his performance. Mm-hmm. And I remember this from when we just watched like the first fifteen minutes that one day, yeah. where I was just like, "What was that?" It was like a you know someone got like their 12 year old nephew to go and be you know you know will graham for a little while it was it was so just bland and mm-hmm. not very multifaceted and, the, and then watching the whole thing it just continued through the whole film yeah. and i was sitting there looking at this character going i'm not convinced that you are this person who has this incredible gift right yeah well he and doesn't that, even seem to have a gift here no he's he's basic detective it's like oh hey talcum powder right oh yeah okay yeah so, oh what what is your special skill yeah. why and, can't jack crawford walk in and do that right 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 yeah, or, or exactly. anyone else and especially since it's it's part of you know the character's you know, backstory and how he's written in yeah. the book is that because he can go into the mind of the killer, this has been a very dangerous on the border of insanity mm-hmm. situation for him. Yeah. It is, it's, it's the Will Graham we are presented with at the very beginning of this book. Well, and when, yeah. when, when Hannibal Lecter says, the reason you caught me is because we are very much alike. Yes. That's true. Yes. <laughs> Not for this Will Graham, no. Though. I mean, this will really th- nothing in this film demonstrates a Will Graham who's anything like mm. Hannibal Lecter, especially Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter. Oh yeah, and and it's frustrating because, I mean, it's it feels very clear to me that Edward Norton had no interest in the source material. Oh. I'm sure he never read it mm-hmm. because that's a far more interesting character to play. If he'd read it, he probably would want to play that character. Yeah. It's not Ted Talley's fault that he did not go into Will Graham's backstory as much. Ted Talley, the uh, screenwriter of Silence of Lambs and Red Dragon. Mm. It's like he read the script and performed exactly what was in the script. Yeah, with with nothing, no nuance to nothing. exactly, and it is, and it remains that there there are moments where I was like hoping, like when he goes back and he's trying to like recreate, you know, the 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 scene, and there was just it would what I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, are you actually thinking about? I can't. He I didn't seem rattled at no, all. No, there was so much there that just was. It was so uninteresting to yeah. watch. I didn't feel like he was uh, really investigating. Disaffected. In, yeah. yeah. That, that's the Very word. Very much so. Very he was much disaffected so. by everything he saw. Yeah. He was disaffected by Hannibal. Mm-hmm. Disaffected by this power he supposedly has. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. You know, and especially after the history that they have. I mean, he did nearly get gutted by Hannibal. I know. You would think that their interactions would have some, some emotional they energy. They made a very yeah. big point to show us the scar. Oh, they totally did. It was like, it's a scar. You Look get it? it? Look at it. So let, let's yeah. talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the only reason this movie was made is because they had a very successful movie and sequel, mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal. And they had a, this outlier film that no one even really believed was a Hannibal Lecter film. You're right. And if they watched it, they'd be like, "What? What? What? Where's? Where? The, why are they spelling Lecter with a CK? Where's Anthony Hopkins? <laughs> right. Where's the you know the glass the, the yeah. know, the glass uh, cell? So and they say, okay, well, let's go back to the beginning. Let's yeah. redo this with our new cast. It packages together very nicely. <laughs> it does. It is. It's corporate synergy. Yes. <laughs> and. 
in in order to do this, in order to make this what the people want, we have to expand Hannibal's part. And in some ways, they did well with expanding Hannibal's part. Mm. In some ways, you know, it's like theatrically opening up a story. When you, when you talk about a play being filmed and you open it up, it's like if a play takes place in one room, well, we're, gonna, we're not going to just have it in one room. We're going to go across the street to a bar. It's like right. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross is a great example of opening up a play successfully. Their opening up of this story puts Hannibal in a weird sort of hamster cage room that hamster. that couldn't possibly exist for any other prisoner at that asylum, which means it was built entirely for Hannibal Lecter, mm -hmm. which means what the fuck? Yeah. Why would Chilton do that? Yeah. And I, I, it, it, <laughs> the whole like opening shot when he goes oh, in Oh, when there. we're supposed to think that Hannibal is not, you know, is going to get him. Oh yeah, exactly. And uh, I was like, did, did did this really look like a dungeon like this in the other movie? Like it, there was just something so theatrical about the stone. Yeah, and, and, and it, like it's like no, 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 no. You have to paint it so it looks just stonier. Well, I don't uh, know. It, Hannibal's it, cell looked like that. Yeah, I mean it is it is identical to Hannibal's cell from Silence of the Lambs. It was the basement of this old building. Yeah. that was converted into a really high security cell. It just seemed more. I don't. I, I don't know. It seemed more convincing to me in Silence. Well, than everything it did here. seemed more. Yeah. Yeah. It silent. may have been the way it was shot. It may be that um, because you're you're dealing, you know, with the way things are shot now, where it's even film looks like HD. <laughs> so, um, w whereas Silence came out at a time where things have, a, you know, film quality is still important to people. You know, it's not all perfectly clear. It's lit in a very different way mm -hmm. where it just may have looked more natural and more like, oh, I see. They took some weird basement area of this really, really old mental uh, institution and they built this. The, well, Silence the, you know. of the Lambs, I, I feel like, was shot a far more. Um, it almost felt documentary. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. It looked like a sixteen millimeter film. Yeah. It looked. It yeah. looked low budget, and that actually worked really well for the. Yeah. Film. Whereas I think it this doesn't, is polished. It, it, this it's is, too yeah. polished. It doesn't work for this, and that sort of hyper realism of going, you know, doing that long uh, tracking shot down, you know, to and th there's a lot of cheap jump scare. In this movie. Oh yes, that's one of my points. Yeah, too. And there was yeah. one in the beginning. What I was can't the one that remember. freaked you out? Something happened that I really know. flipped you out. Oh, it I was um, the the dolls. The dolls? No, I don't know if that was it. There was when one they that zoomed in on the dolls' eyes. Yeah, they they zoomed in on the dolls' eyes. I don't know if that was it. Because that's the one I wrote was jump scare. <laughs> um, when oh, well, Will is preparing yes. himself when he goes into the room to go, and I, I remember and, the and I wrote down prepares himself with quotes because all he does is put pinch his fingers. Well, yes, that is that is to, how you show that he, stress. Yeah, tension. He's, he's preparing to get into the mind of the killer by looking like he has a migraine. I mean, yeah, the the extent of Edward Norton's acting in this film is. Rubbing his forehead, mm -hmm. pinching his nose, closing his eyes. Yes, that's oh, yeah. it. That was it right there. That's so the then you get into that, and they and they add in overly dramatic strings. Yeah, oh yes, mm -hmm. you know, and then you know, then all of a sudden it's like they're. I'm trying to read my writing here. Well, it the says, doll's eyes was how he realized yeah. that, that that's what do, uh, Dollaride was doing. He with. he goes back to the hotel room and he's looking at all the photos. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they're all spread out around him, but how he realizes it's the doll—it's a jump scare. Yeah, it's a close-up shot of the of the doll, mm -hmm. and it does that in a, oh! <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. kind, you know, kind of moment. And I was like, oh, well, also might have been the part. in this. I, I wrote cheap jump scares too, in, in, in and, and lots of rubbing face and eyes. <laughs> I really, really detested the lurid elements of this. Mm -hmm. During the the Leeds murders, we we had um, definitely sexualized murders mm -hmm. because we had flashes of breasts. We had in, in these things that you know in in an R rated film, I have no problem flashing nudity because it's titillating. Mm -hmm. None at all. There, there didn't need to be nudity in the that scene. It all it did was make you like, oh hey, oh I'm really uncomfortable because that you know that I I know what happened after that, right? And right. It, so it's it's just it's upsetting. Yeah, and I know Brett Ratner was not intending for it to be a hey, 
I'm going to make you feel weird about this. Right. He was thinking, hey, we got some nudity. Let's throw some nudity in there. Let's right. do that. This seems like a good place to... Yeah, yeah. Why, why not just throw, throw it in boob. the murder flashback? Yeah. Why not? Why not cheap just scares, do that? Cheap nudity. Cheap, yeah. Cheap nudity. Cheap. And cheap, cheap, cheap. also, I mean, the biggest thing I noticed in... Because the scenes in Hannibal's cell are shot very similarly to mm-hmm. Silence of the Lambs. But Brad Radner is afraid to have them looking directly into the lens, which was one of the real hallmarks of Silence of the oh, Lambs. Oh, yeah. Was this uh, where where um, Lecter and Clarice are looking at each other and we are each of them mm-hmm. in the scene. And it's really unsettling. And it's something he gets really close to in these scenes between Will and Hannibal, but never it actually goes to it. They're always looking slightly, slightly away. away. There I, was a neat reflection. And there this. was, there was one, one part one, yes. where, where Hannibal's looking at the mirror and you can see Will. Oh yes. When or, he's looking in, in the, yes. the distorted mirror, mm-hmm. that was, I, I made a note of that. That was one of the best shots in the film. One of the only really good, good shots. shots in the film. I was debating between that as my best <laughs> that, part that, or the grammar teeth, but I like the grammar teeth because no, no, yeah, it tells, absolutely. it tells a story. There yeah. can be more than one. There can, there I have <laughs> several. <laughs> uh, Harvey Keitel. Oh, I love Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel's really good as Crawford. Yes. I mean, he's, he's serviceable. I, I wish Scott Glenn had come back. We have, mm-hmm this uh series right and it's it seems like each movie just replaces bit characters. various characters anthony and, hopkins, just, and doesn't make any apology no for it. no it's fine yeah. you got anthony mm-hmm. hopkins you've got frankie faison it's a hannibal movie it's a hannibal frankie movie. faison is barney yeah and he is actually the only actor to appear in all four. Oh, really i didn't realize well, he, that well, see, there's five now, but yeah. at at the mm-hmm. if, if we if we exclude Hannibal yeah. Rising, Frankie Faison is in Manhunter. He doesn't play Barney, but he's in Manhunter, which is kind of cool. Oh, that is cool. There was someone else I was surprised that was also in Man, uh, Manhunter. That was, and I can't remember the guy who was on Frasier was in Manhunter. Uh, he's also the bug guy in Silence of Lambs, but I can't think. Yeah, of his I was name trying to remember. The there was somebody head. that I I saw that had credits in in both movies, and I was like, wow, I didn't realize that they, they played like a completely different character. Mm-hmm. But came back and wound up doing like a character in like Silence or something like yeah. that, and it was interesting to see that crossover. I like that um, uh, our Doctor Chilton comes back. Oh, Anthony Held is great. As yeah, Chilton. yeah, I mean, and I, I love him because he plays Smarmy so well. He does, and he's mm-hmm. a very different Chilton than Raoul Spars' yeah. Chilton, and they're both really good in their in their yeah. own ways. And that, and he looks almost identical yeah. to the way he looked in Silence of the oh, Lambs, yeah. which is great. You know, it's nice. It's nice to see. So, but again, I can't fault Anthony Hopkins for aging. And then that's the thing is, it, it is the not amount his of time fault. that has passed. There's nothing you can do. Well, I I love that. You know, we talked about this in the opening sequence. It takes place in 1980. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs was 1991. This movie was 2002. So Anthony Hopkins is 11 slash 12 years older, mm-hmm. playing 11 years younger. Younger. And it's a stretch. You know, you yeah. can't just throw a ponytail on a guy and have him play that. Exactly. And that was the thing when we did that opening scene. I was like, really? Mm-hmm. With, the, with the comically bad flautist. You know, yeah. that flautist does not get to continue play, play in this orchestra because he's ridiculous. It's not only Hannibal hearing this. It's everybody in the audience after that that performance saying, hey, what's the deal with? And I'm pretty sure you can't keep a job like that. Yeah. No. No, no. Yeah. He would because there there are thousands of flautists who would take their place. Yeah, and and that's what was really disappointing about that is not just that this guy would be fired if he was that <laughs> bad, but it's the whole idea of he, uh, Hannibal's hearing is so good. Like he is, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't need to be bad. All of his sen- yeah. his senses are so heightened. He's this otherworldly, uh, you know, uh, 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 ability. Uh, for her taste and smell and uh, so the fact that he could pick out the subtleties Mm -hmm. of this you know you know of the the flute playing not being up to par is so much more interesting than everybody noticing that the flute player is bad well and and apparently everybody doesn't notice except for the head of the uh you know the organization there Mm -hmm. but we needed to notice the audience and this is uh, this scene this opening sequence is really indicative of everything that is to follow in the film Mm. because it 
is not subtle in any way. No. Every opportunity it has to be subtle, it's not subtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the flautist isn't subtle. The, the, the worst offense in this opening is Hannibal Lecter having written sweetbreads yes. in his medical textbook. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Why didn't he just find recipe cards that say human torso also works as right. I mean that it, it's, <laughs> it's like movie for dummies. I mean, it's, it's seriously, yeah. it insults my intelligence. Mm-hmm. I saw that and I was like, Oh really? We had to do that. And, and again, yeah. you know, I, I thought, the, I thought the way Anthony Hopkins performed the scene was great. Mm-hmm. The realization that Will knows was great. Yeah. The, the telling Will what he's doing and to relax. He doesn't want to hurt him. Though his movements, and obviously it's it's like that's, well, clearly this is going to hurt him. And maybe not what you wanted to do, but what the director asked you to do yeah. is going to hurt him. But then, okay, he gets stabbed with a quiver of arrows. Yes. Oh, that was so uh, yeah. bad. Shot multiple times. Yes. All that <sighs> happened, and I was just like, what? <laughs> oh. Re- First did we just all, do that? He kicked the arrows into Hannibal. Yeah. It was... It was like telegraphed, like, mm-hmm. hey, I wonder if those arrows are going to come into play. Yeah, he, they totally Which, did telegraph. I want to say yeah. physics is against him there. Well, no, he <laughs> didn't. Just... He, he grabbed them. And, he grabbed and them. Stabbed oh, him. Stabbed him. okay. But no, they... he knocked them over, though. Yeah. Well, uh, and they did do that little thing where he, like, looked at where them. Where he, he played with the fletchings. With the, yeah. yeah. Woo, fletchings. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got you. It's got that, you know we we are talking about Hannibal Lecter stuff. We got to use good words. Yeah, we have oh. to yeah, good words. Good 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 Proper extra words. Well, Not many people know archery. I thought it was silly. It was it, it was it was very silly. Yeah, I I've got a few For interesting a very serious moment. A few moment. interesting factoids. Should've Dante been. Spinotti, the uh, cinematographer, mm-hmm. cinematographer for Manhunter. How'd they do that? Shot. Red Dragon. Really? And this is this is my favorite thing that I didn't realize at the time, but was was reading through IMDb. So Dennis Farina played Jack Crawford in Manhunter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Another Dennis Farina, great actor. Um, a Chicago cop turned actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really cool. And then Harvey Keitel plays Jack Crawford in this one. Now, if you remember the film Get Shorty. Oh, my God, yeah. Dennis Farina has a major part in it. And then Harvey Keitel plays Dennis Farina in the movie, within the movie of Get Shorty. And has the best line, perhaps in cinema history, fuck you, fuck balls. <laughs> oh, my God, that made me cough. I laughed so hard. So, I mean, that's, that's obviously not consequential whatsoever, but it's no. a fun little diversion. We went from this ridiculously theatrical scene, this over-the-top, not subtle at all, to a great credit sequence that I assume was directed by one of the great credit sequence people. Mm -hmm. You know, they... It owed a lot to Seven, I think, with the the use of the the journal. Mm. And, but it was really good at telling the story from the moment we left it to the moment we come right, back right. without without overly telling it. And if only the rest of the movie had been as subtle as the credit sequence, exactly, it could have been a really great. And we have again Danny Elfman's score, great, great score. Yeah. And it was it was like the, the Tattler head, headlines were were great because it also gave us a great. Uh, inter, uh, introduction to Freddie Lounge because mm-hmm. we get to see the tabloid headlines and and, and all of that uh, and how time has passed, but all done in that hyperbole, crazy, yeah. you know, in your face, you know, the, the predecessor to clickbait. Uh, you know, uh, you won't. Lot. Hey, Hannibal uh, Lecter captured. You won't believe why. Exactly. Check out inside. Exactly. <laughs> you know the the the, the leading you know, those leading titles and those leading uh, headlines and or a- having to have uh, everything rhyme or be all in, mm-hmm. or have some alliteration yeah. like all like that, variety. All, really. Yeah, that old uh, uh, you know what the posts used to do in New York all the time that everyone. Love to hate. Let's uh, let's talk about some more of uh, the Leeds house here. Mm. 
Okay. They're setting Will Graham up to be the smartest man in the room. <laughs> really, that's that's what this movie is trying to do. It's showing us that the, he's he's a badass cop who can do anything. Really, is that's what this movie's version of Will Graham is. Uh. Um, and so nobody noticed that there was a dog house and a dog bed within mm. visual distance of each <laughs> other. Yeah, because we see both of them in one shot. Yeah, Will Graham is the first person to ask, "Where's the dog?" Yeah, really, really. Nobody, nobody yeah. thought about that. That there's a dog, a big dog bed. Yeah, probably a big dog. Mm-hmm. Where's the dog? Everybody would think that. Would this think is, that. Exactly. This is not a new thing. Yeah, it would be something if they. Uh, if oh, it was and subtle. there was a dog in a photo on the fridge, just in case we, we didn't, didn't even get, get it. <laughs> yeah, that does. That's that's. Uh, there was a lot of spoon committed. feeding in this. Yeah. Lots of it. Well, there, and I think I said this when we got like to the end it was a lot of hey check this out you get it you get it <laughs> it was Look. as though brad ratner was sitting next to us watching the movie and just nudging us with his elbow. Hey, 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 did you get that like, did you see what i did there and did pointing you, did you see? and nodding did you his see? head <laughs> like huh? yeah. watch, watch this part watch do this, you watch this see part. do you see <laughs> yeah exactly when we I mean, get there you know, the do you see is incredibly underwhelming oh it is mm-hmm. it is and it was just sad from ray fine ray fine i know exactly I, that's why i cannot I, I just simply cannot believe it was the actor's fault here. Well, no, I, 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 I think can't. I think it was a lot of the directing. Yeah, I, can't. I mean it. I mean, there's, it's there's he also who must the, not be named. There's also the thing that, uh, and and today we learned from J.K. Rowling that's supposed to be pronounced Voldemort. Oh, French. Well, she said she thinks she's the only person who has ever pronounced it that way, but that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Yeah, uh, you don't pronounce. She didn't bother to tell of any no. of the filmmakers that, but yeah. you, you know. Like it, it, Merlot, so, Merlot, yeah. Merlot. Merlot. Well, Merlot. Well, let's, let's get a, a nice Chianti. <laughs> you know, I was talking about that with a with a friend, and and that we'll talk about that more on Silence of Lambs. Mm. But that is Anthony Hopkins making fun of Jodie Foster's accent. Uh, Every time you hear the wacky accents in Hannibal Lecter speak, he's making fun of her. And in Silence of Lambs, she was so upset that he was making fun of her performance. Really? Yeah, but he was just, he was making it's fun of character. Clarice Starling. Yeah. And the fact that she was getting upset worked so well because she was trying to hide her accent. Mm-hmm. Right. And, but Jody, he, <laughs> she, she had thought that he was actually he was making actually... fun of her. That's hilarious. Yeah. It all works. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Philip Seymour Hoffman because really, come on, you oh, both Phil. could have mentioned Philip yes. Seymour Hoffman as one of the great things about this film. You know, well, we, I, I was, we don't have to scratch the surface far to find great things. They're I, just I'm trying. I, I guess I, I'm trying to go in in, in some kind of order <laughs> here. But, uh, yeah, we're willy nilly all over the place, which we makes are it willy we are nilly. thoroughly willy nilly here. So that's why it's like piggly there are wiggly. things I there are things I will mention piggly when piggly we wiggly. start getting bigly. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. I had to say it <laughs> every time I go. In, I, I drive past one of those grocery stores or go in one. I have to giggle because I'm like, this is. I never, I never saw one until I was in my 20s and I went down south. And we I used saw, to have one really close to here. I oh. laughed so hard yeah. for so long. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's a store. Yeah. Somebody named, named a it store. Piggly Wiggly. And I went into one and I, I just couldn't stop. So yeah, really, what Ophelia laughing. is saying is, if you have Piggly Wiggly merchandise. <laughs> Or maybe a Piggly Wiggly <laughs> logo. You should send it to her. And really, you know what? Piggly Wiggly goes really well uh, with our it, Mason it, Verger. It does. Oh, it yeah. goes very well oh, with and, Mason Verger. Oh, my God. Thank you to our fan who sent me a picture of the Funko Pop yes, Mason Verger. Which it was, was awesome. amazing. Surrounded by little pigs. Love yes. it so yes. much. It was I adorable. want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. So whoever sent the picture, it's find like, out where it came, came from, from and tell me from, how to get one. I love that it had the Fimo dough. That stuff. Yeah, yeah it looked like it was. It was no built up with. Oh, not phyllo dough. Phyllo dough. That's, phyllo. That's it was built up I with. Would uh, say phyllo. Tasty. It's it's Fimo, right? Fimo. I said Fimo. Fimo. No, F- you said Fimo, F- and he. I think he I, said I, Cooper I tried Fimo. to say Fimo, and he said okay. Fimo. It's clay. It's yeah, like a clay I've worked that Fimo you can before. bake. Yeah, you okay. put it in the oven. Yeah, yeah. like Fimo, but not as Fimo. But not not good to eat. No, you would not eat it. No, you wouldn't eat no. it. No. <laughs> no. Did you notice it was Jack's idea for Will to go visit Lecter? It wasn't Will's? I didn't notice that. Because this version of Will Graham has to be the reluctant savior. Ah. 
So Jack is saying, hey, you should go do this thing. And Will's like, uh, what are you saying, Jack? What are you saying? You <laughs> saying I should go revisit Hannibal Lecter? That's <laughs> interesting. I didn't even put that together. The scene between Lecter and, and Will is almost word for word from the book, mm -hmm. but only one of the actors is actually performing at the time. <laughs> um, the other one's phoning it in. We have the wonderful Chilt line about Chilton, <laughs> Mm -hmm. That he fumbles at your head yeah, like a like, freshman pulling at a panty. I got yeah, yeah, I wrote that down too. That was too. great. And because this is set in a more dated time period, in, even even in nineteen, we have okay, we have no idea when this takes place. Yeah, because the timeline is really fucked up. Oh here. yeah, and we talked about this yeah. that it, it we it's it's somewhere eighties. All we know is it has to be late eighties. Yeah, that's it. And. They, they kind of tried. They 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 brought in some period cars. <laughs> they brought in some period VHS yes. tapes, including Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes, which, which is came so out after period. Silence of Lambs, yeah. which is you know that that's wonderful. It was a very interesting VHS collection. They either were using mini DV or high eight tapes. I yeah, don't know. The, mini VHS. The, the fact that at this stage of the game, he they had decided to use video. And, and families were still sending their home movies out, even though they didn't need them converted anymore, yeah. sending them out to one company in the middle of the United States to turn them into those laughable VHS collections with the, with the star wipes and everything. Yeah. What are if we supposed to buy here? Just oh. have it be freaking film. Yeah. Why? A, if if, if you've it's already, a period piece. it's a period piece. If you've established that the, the first thing you put a time stamp on it, you put a, a title card on it well, that they says only, they only gave us 80s, one date, 1980, 1980, and that was for the opening scene. So you know it's somewhere between 1980 and 1989, or 90, or whatever, or, you know. Or if we want to say, that actually, they lead into that it butts right up to silence. Yeah. So we can say it's late 80s. My recollection of the late 80s is not that you could do that with videotape. Not everybody no, was you doing had, that. No, you had full-size VHS tapes, mm -hmm. and that was, let's say, at the earliest 88, 89. Yeah. You know, really, what people were still... People were still using film, or if yeah. you don't want to make it film, make it them sending their pictures out to be developed to do something, something. other than because why would they do this? Yeah. Why they have the they have the facility to play them back at home? Right. It it was it was it was a little forced, and and then we and had to, clueless, and, and then we had to sit through the the oh, lovely family video. video that video with horny dad. Yeah. Yes, and that was kind of creepy to me that they yeah. they, they made them like ugh. again we're probably they overly sexualized. We're probably colored by how you know we've seen the you know with Hannibal that they did the families so well. Yeah, and it, and they didn't give us too much of the families. They gave us just enough, but it was it was like the really hot wife. Mm -hmm. And even like the husband was like kind of youngish and fit. And there was, there were like, Hey, I get it. Some, sometimes you, you, you want to be all over your husband. Not saying that that's not what, you know, married couples with kids do. But on but, home videos, do you, do you really do that? Do no, they really... when you're there with your kids and yeah. you're doing like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more thing <laughs> to the camera and like, hey, grabbing your wife. Why don't you bring that to it, bed later? A, yeah, it, it was a little creepy and uncomfortable. And I didn't want them to be characterized that way. No. Mm -hmm. Especially when the whole idea of him like wanting to change these families is, is not that they seemed like there was something... Uh, like sinful or, or, lewd. or lewd about them. I got the impression that their lives looked perfect yeah. mm -hmm. and that they seemed like very ordinary, regular, average. Nothing but, would stand out. Right, right. And Other that than stuff, they're happy and they're rich and they're, and they're well off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That stuff felt yeah. like perhaps a filmmaker who wasn't quite certain what normal and average looked <laughs> looks like. like. I mean, really, that and that very well could be it. This felt, there are a lot of things in this movie that feel like a Brett Ratner movie, like that turn of the 90s type movie. Mm -hmm. And this was made in the 2000s. I really bristled when, when um, Will Graham called his son a faggot. Yeah. Like, I oh, really yeah. had a problem with that. You know, I, obviously, I have a problem with that 
term in general, right. yeah. but yeah. tonally, I, I have a problem with that whole well, fucking the whole, scene. Well, the whole scene was, un- it, was weird. It's so, so odd yeah. and out of nowhere. And again, is Dollar Eye writing that in the big book? Yeah. No. Is he I, right? that, but uh, w- would he even he see took our, that? Uh, he took artistic license. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think he embellished. Yeah. Yeah. embellished. Just, this is just the way like, uh, a psychotic grandmother would talk talk to. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the way. Yeah, grandchild oh. that that they're abusing, mm-hmm. and then, and then the fact that they didn't really fully commit to the time period. No, what, the costumes kept bothering me because it was like some modern person's idea of what 80s looked like. Well, and like, it's 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 taking the entire decade. Yeah. It's like, "Oh, it's 80s." You know, it's it's like wedding singer 80s. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it but even worse than that. At least wedding singer 80s looks 80s. They, That's true. You know, they already made this movie and it looked 80s in Manhunter. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, and that I think that that's sort of what made me laugh about it is that if you wanted the, the movie that looks 80s is Manhunter. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but but Manhunter looks 80s in that scary part of 80s of the hair and the, and the, the slubbed uh, jackets and things are cropped or the, the, you know, all the stuff like all the TV shows that you remember at that time period that and movies and Miami Vice and all the, the sitcoms. It's like and all the movies. It's like I, I keep looking at, you know, that the 80s Will Graham and it looks like, you know, Miami Vice or Buckaroo Banzai or you know the it's so stylized in the 80s style because it's seen through the 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 eyeglass of that time mm-hmm. like he's gonna have hair that looks like that and he's yeah. gonna have a jacket because man in the 80s he looked freaking rad <laughs> <laughs> but now that's he, true he looks Radical. pretty dorky <laughs> yeah um whereas it's almost like somebody was offended by 80s uh, aesthetic yeah and didn't want to go there, like didn't want to fully commit to what the late 80s looks like. Mm-hmm. Didn't go with, hey, I'm going to make it stereotypical 80s and girls are going to have leg warmers and we're going to have neon colors and, and big earrings and shoulder pads. You didn't even see that. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, like M- Molly was wearing the torn jeans of the 90s. Mm-hmm. She looks grunge. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 was she supposed to look With hippie? a little bit of hippie. Well, she's, she, had, but, she had grunge with hippie. Grunge Hip, with hippie. hippie. Hippie grunge. Exactly. The suits didn't look really 80s. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I lived it. And <laughs> well, it, this it, fell it, way it short. Was, I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I'm fairly confident that a, a designer was saying, okay, so this is period appropriate. And they're like, okay, well, let's dial this back. Let's dial this back. Let's dial this back. Let's make because it all look like the 90s. They are making yeah. a period piece that doesn't look like a period piece. Yeah. They are making a period piece that may as well not be a period piece. The oh, yeah. only reason it needs to be is because it takes place before Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. And they back themselves into that corner. Yeah. It, it is a lot of it seems just like, like, they didn't put forth the effort. No. Or they didn't want to go and get things that looked really period. Somebody just went shopping and went, hey, this looks kind of Went 80s. to a thrift store <laughs> and picked up VHS tapes, and one of them happened to be Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Doubtfire. Yeah. And somebody yeah. who picked it up, you know, hadn't been alive in the year that this is Mrs. Old, Doubtfire right? this came is out. <laughs> so. uh, that might be a bit extreme. <laughs> you know, it was less than a decade. <laughs> That's true. But... <laughs> But still, it, you know, it was kind of funny to catch something like that. I think it is. It's like just oh, it was on VHS. It had to be eighties. Yeah, it, it was nine years nine years before. The, yeah. So yeah, Mrs. D- Mrs. Doubtfire was ninety three. Good lord. Yeah. Yep. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. But yeah, the, and and so when they would pull up with these, you know, the chunky. Uh, late 80s, that K car look, mm-hmm. you know, with every single vehicle, it would actually it was actually kind of jarring to me because it didn't look like anything else really, mm-hmm. really looked like that. And I wanted it to because they were keeping the stylized dialogue, the you know everything you know from you know won't be a tick and and the way Jack ta- uh, talks is very kind of 70s gumshoe, mm-hmm. um, and I wanted it to make sense. I wanted it yeah. to seem to fall with the timeline, but it 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 kind of didn't, unfortunately. No. In in a lot of ways. And even the set dressing 
a lot of the choices that they made. It was like, let me put one real obvious dated thing like VHS tapes yeah. and nothing else in the room will actually look like it's and 80s. We, we won't care. No one will care. No yeah. one will care. No one's yeah. not even and, paying oh, attention. No one's paying attention. We'll put some like Laurie Ash- Laura Ashley kind of looking curtains on there, <laughs> but it still looks like a modern kitchen. Edward Norton talking to himself in the tree is just as silly as uh, William Peterson talking okay. to himself in the tree. And then when he finds the uh, the little yeah, red dragon the little symbol, red dragon symbol. Which, uh, which Dollar Eye took the time to color in in this version. <laughs> he had a lot of time on his hands. He did. Well, he was just sitting in that tree yeah. with, the, with the cap from a late oh, 90s yeah. um, you guys pointed uh, that pop out. can. Yes, yes. I was like, can. wait a minute. That's like the pop the top. It tab. should have the pull tab. And then I was trying to remember when that changed. Pick I can't a year, remember. for Christ's sake, Christ movie. Sake. Exactly. And you know, I should have looked that up. I actually don't know what when year that... the pop top ended. Yeah, it was it was earlier, not earlier eighties, but um, closer to the middle of the decade than the end of. Yeah, because I'm trying to remember because I do remember it more as when I was younger, mm. because I remember pulling them off and, and uh, hooking them together, because people were making like dresses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Out well, of they them. still do with the ones that yeah come out now, but and then they decided to just do the pop top where mm. it wasn't a pull tab it would, it would stay on but it did it just seemed to sort of pull me out of mm-hmm. like where are we on this that seems <laughs> you know so i guess we're late 80s i don't know what we're saying here we, that's it's it's miscellaneous 80s miscellaneous 80s let's talk about francis dolleride because we're we're about there mm-hmm. this gives us a good amount of backstory for him and waste two tremendous actors. <laughs> wow. We're not bitter, are we? Well, no. It, I mean, when I heard Ray Fiennes was being cast as the Red Dragon, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. How how phenomenal could that be? You know, it's Ray Fiennes. Yes. The, the man burst on the scene in Schindler's List as one of the most despicable on-screen Nazis you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And still, at times, made him likable. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing performance. This is not. It's underwhelming here. Mm-hmm. His his accent yeah. is spotty and weird, and yeah. some of that is his performance for his laughable makeup effect on his lip mm-hmm. that moves yes. and is so obviously makeup. Yeah. I, and there, there was a lot. It's, it's so interesting. This entire movie it seems to go back and forth between overdone and underdone. Yeah. Because... I, I I thought that the nursing home sign was overdone. What, what, well, no. And that, that chase down the ridiculously long... To, yeah. To movie old house? Yeah, exactly. It was sort of like the... You know, the whole... We're, we're supposed to get that it's a nursing home from all the, you know, the, the beds and the... And the, the wheelchairs and the... I know it's more about back storyline. And mm-hmm. I get that you don't want to take the time... <laughs> Uh, or you think we're too no, dumb. No, we're spending way too much time with Hannibal Lecter. Uh, you know, that's where that's the time what it was. Is going. So so we can have more time with Hannibal Lecter rather than let the story tell itself. We're just gonna put like a big huge sign on a big stone wall. And and I and I know that it this is supposed to be a big house mm-hmm. and everything, but I don't know, the way it comes across in the book is that it is a nice sized house. But it is a house. It's not a mansion. Right. It's just like, it, kind of like the way they play it in the TV show, where it's just a really nice Victorian house. And this is a woman who found a way to make money quick and cheap mm-hmm. and easy and um, converted a home into a nursing home. But I don't think she had a long drive with a stately no. stone, uh, you know, uh, um, entrance it seemed really over the top for what this house was supposed to be mm-hmm. uh, and what they showed us and everything. So you have this grandiose entrance and this sign. this, but, And then you have poor Ray Fines playing it down. And yeah. it was. I just felt like I'm going to beat you over the head with this, but then I'm going to make this so subtle it looks like we're not doing anything. And I think that was my biggest frustration. And that's probably what you're experiencing here. You get you know, Ray Fines, you get Reba, who and, and that was Watson the most is... unsubtle blind person introduction. Yeah, it's like okay, 
uh, Reba would know where he is in the room yes. because we've demonstrated that Reba is good at that. Mm -hmm. So her handing the film, oh, uh, it's like, oh, oh, by the way, I'm blind. I totally did a face palm when she did that because mm -hmm. I was just like, really? And that's what it was. It, it was like, hey, look, if you didn't get it. By the way, she's blind. She's blind. Yeah. And I thought the same thing. And I'm like, when blind people are talking to 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 people they actually know where they are yeah. yeah like if she was handing it she may not know exactly where his hand is right she, she might fall short but of she the certainly hand but she'll be, know the direction of she, the body exactly she would know where the body is yeah we and if she was uncertain, she would be uh, self-conscious enough to just hold it vaguely out, yeah. and he would reach forward. And it's not like they were pretending that she had recently gone blind. They right. they did discuss that she had gone blind. She went when blind she was around younger. when she was six or seven. Because yeah. we do get the great reference that she saw a cougar yeah. before yeah. she went blind. And she wasn't sure if it was, that it was real or yeah. imagined. I, I really like yeah. that. And I think it was also hard with her doing her, you know, being blind. So she has these incredibly big, incredibly clear blue mm -hmm. eyes, and she kept her eyes really wide open, like super I, forced. I think that's just Emily Watson. Oh, you think so? It just seemed. I mean, having seen her before, I think, oh, I she, think she, she just, just does got that big eyes. All the time. And it was, it was really distracting because it felt like, again, oh, I'm blind. So I have to stare vacantly off to one thing, and my eyes have to be, you know, like wide, wide open, mm -hmm. you know, where you could see the whites almost entirely around them. Yeah. And, you know, having interacted with people who are legally blind, it, they usually are not. It, there's a, no. there's it, it's more subtle. And most of the time, yeah. their eyes track. Yeah, their yeah. eyes will track where the person is in the room, or where mm -hmm. the action is going on in the room, where the discussion is going on in the room, and it felt like she never was doing that. Yeah, she was. She didn't have that natural flow to her eye movement. No, she had right. a very concentrated, I'm not looking at you, I'm yeah. not looking, I'm not looking at, at you yeah. because yes. I'm blind. Yes. And uh, again, I don't blame the actor because, I mean, she's a tremendous actor. Oh, yeah. And it almost feels like maybe she was doing that, that looking around thing. And, and she was told And, and she to. was told, hey, you're blind. Yeah. yeah stop you wouldn't doing be, that. Be, stop you wouldn't be more that. blind. Be more blind. We need more, more blindness. More. Bigger blindness. By the way, Brett Ratner, if you're listening and you would like to dispute any of this, <laughs> please do. Because yeah. otherwise, tell fuck us, you for really trying really trying. hard to ruin Red Dragon. When, when she, you know, was really in the thick of some great, you know, emotional moments, mm -hmm. she was spectacular. Yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. We we have the note on the toilet paper. Yes. yes. Which, which is, we, we, I really, I love the code stuff in Red Dragon. It is difficult to film, and especially when you have the dramatic falling out of the toilet paper roll that we got here with the toilet paper note. Um, but the gathering of evidence while we're, while we're doing this, uh, we're, we're listening to them talk about what they're doing, and the, the, the toilet paper is being taken over and looked at under the thing. Yeah. And this is some really good visual storytelling uh, with, the, with the guy going down the hallway to, to Pretend, Lecter's yeah. cage. Mm -hmm. and, and you see he doesn't buy it. Oh, yeah. When he's like, oh, well, that's, that's a place it's always fun. And it was. They tell him, you know, do this. And yeah. they, you know, have somebody, you know, grumbling and go down the hallway. And, yeah, it's like he's way too smart. But Jack Crawford doesn't know what a book code is and needs it explained to him by Lloyd Bowman, the code breaker. I don't think so. Yeah. Jack Crawford knows what it is. The audience may not. Right. There's a lot of um, unnecessary exposition and explanation in a lot of the things that they do here. And and is Lloyd Bowman going to lose his Library of Congress um, oh, yeah. library card because he's circling stuff in a fucking Library, library of Congress, Congress book? book? Yeah, I know. Are you kidding? We're like, <laughs> what? What is going so on So you pointed there? to something in your notes What, what that I missed? Um, it was, uh, I, I'm having like trouble tracking where I'm at. Oh, and we're, it, all, we're all over the place. Yeah. Um, it, it was just, uh, when, when, uh, when Dollaride is introduced after the nursing, uh, he's doing his presses with the, and he's got the stocking cap on oh, yes. while, while he's getting uh, pumped up. And then he puts the teeth we don't, in. We don't actually see mm -hmm. Dollaride's face no. until the scene with Reba. We see yeah. the, uh, the stocking uh, cap, yeah, and then we see the teeth the face, teeth. the half get face, yeah, and we have like you know our behold the red dragon moment. But then they go to the book, yeah, 
And I just thought it was really interesting. Big book that of murder. The, and the, in his big book of murder, he had the perfect size spot <laughs> waiting for that article that was going in there. It was like, he, it just, you know, like he knew it, 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 there was just something too perfect. It was exactly It, it was exactly this. And then he used the glue stick. Yeah, the glue stick really irritated <laughs> me and it really shouldn't. And I'm trying not to just compare versions but isn't rubber cement just so much more evocative than a white child's glue stick? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was. It's. It's. It, it, it like it again fell short and mm-hmm. seemed just sort of meh. But um, it was re- <laughs> meh. Meh is exactly how I would describe <laughs> this film. Exactly. This. This is a two star film. A two, it, two star a, a films two are almost film. more offensive to me than one star <laughs> films because it's it's almost like they didn't bother right it's like if they we, worked we, harder it could have been we worse. should just be happy everyone showed up <laughs> right <laughs> I, I want another thing that kind of uh, was a little odd to me uh is actually so everything is perfectly glued on he's used his <laughs> glue stick because you know he, he he's gotten his school supplies ready for that year he the way he traces hannibal's face i love you yeah i love you and it is it's sort of like oh it's you know like like like, like the favorite member of the boy band that he's <laughs> <laughs> hannibal lecter team beat cover yeah exactly exactly does he have a posters up in his room of hannibal <laughs> above his bed so that when he goes into his bed at night yeah. he can imagine them being together it was it was it was like i didn't get i i don't know it, i i understand he's supposed to be a fan but that I kind of took it kind of like the hypersexualized family yeah. member where I was like, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. Well, and that weird page with all the cutouts of Hannibal's face. On yeah. It? yeah. All the same one, too. All the same. So yeah. he bought like a whole stack of the mm-hmm. same magazine. For his scrapbook. For his scrapbook. And my scrapbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mm-hmm. We we did get a wonderful scene with with angry Chilton taking all of Lecter's stuff away, mm-hmm. and we get again. This is this is a hey, remember Silence of Lambs? Remember how awesome that was? Scene where Lecter is on the dolly with that face played over his face. Oh and yeah, you have we, to do that. I think it's in the contract. We we get both that and the classic Lecter mask mm-hmm. because of course Philip Seymour Hoffman was fantastic. Oh my god. Yes. He he plays generic scummy schlubby guy mm-hmm. so well. And it's funny because he plays it so well you initially don't think it's very good. Yeah. But then you realize exactly what he's doing. Oh yeah. And I, I like that he it was it was like he was ill spoken, uh uh slumpy. Yeah. Uh couldn't look anybody in the eye. Uh, mumbled a lot. And what, it was like, okay, Phil is doing something here. Yeah, it's not he, just he showed up. He's yeah, actually performing. Yeah, this guy needs to be writing for the Tatler. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he could. this is the best he's ever going to be. I mean, he, he reminded me a lot of um, Orson Welles' In Touch of Evil. Just oh. like that incredibly unlikable and sort of just like, whatever, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Just really, and and that's what's so great about Philip Seymour Hoffman is he's not afraid to be unappealing mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. And you, you really see that I mean, when, when he's sitting in that chair glued to it with his gut hanging out and his tidy whiteies on. Yes. I mean, he is, he is the definition of unappealing in that shot. But he's... He's so good because, and when he, when he's talking to the dragon, uh, the the moments that really stood out to me was when he thinks there's a little hope, mm-hmm. and he's he's like, oh, but I yeah, understand. yeah, oh yeah, let's sure, yeah, and it's- just you see the hope coming back to him, mm-hmm. and that's something you can't fake, yeah, and. Uh, it's it's Philip Seymour Hoffman has just always been that well he's just magnetic and interesting to watch His regardless of what are, he, in, are interesting yeah. it, it winds up not being it's not deadpan it's not one thing he's not going over the top but he's giving you a lot 
in what he's doing. And it's true, that whole thing, thankfully, it was. It's like we got to see somebody who was working nuances yeah. and, and finding a character in there and, and, and putting something there that is a little different. And I liked that it wasn't like a loud, brash, uh, really obnoxious guy. That he was sort of obnoxious in a mumbly way, mm-hmm. and that he was he was like somebody you didn't like because of the way he he was slumpy and, and just a mess. And that all the backpedaling and how oh I don't want to uh, you know I haven't seen your face. Yeah, the uh, moment yeah. he goes into self preservation mode, he's completely different from the rest of the film, and mm-hmm. that's that's indicative of a good performance. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in in a scene that really requires a great performance, Ray Fiennes is not bringing it in the do you see scene. No, he there was no intensity there. No, it's just do you see? Do you, do see? you see? Yeah. Because that should be scary. And Tom right. Noonan is so wonderful in Manhunter doing that Do You See. And Armitage was so mm-hmm. great doing... And Do You See is intensity and terrifying in the book. And here the only thing he gives that I think is really um, intense is the you owe me awe thing. Right. But mm-hmm. everything else is sort of like, rushed and weird and yeah. un, unimpressive yeah i wrote down rushed yeah yeah there's a there's a couple of points where i wrote rushed that yeah. i feel like that's a common thread throughout this film is that there are whole clumps of scenes where it just feels like they're just trying to get through it and while it's commendable that they're trying to put as much of the book as possible on screen which they really are yeah i mean don't half-ass it then just right. do it just- exactly it's true. It's like the, the, there was not enough intensity in the deep. Everything from, you know, once we had pulled away from, uh, you know, Phil doing great stuff there. And yeah. we go back to Rafe the, and, and being in front of the slides, like when he takes the kimono off yeah. and shows the tattoo. No blurred ass here. No, no. We saw a lot of fine <laughs> ass. And, and a little movie. bit of front. I mean, yeah. we didn't we didn't get the full Monty, but we got, yeah, you didn't yeah. get the full Rafe. The full no, Rafe, no. We got we got some side side Rafe. profile. Side Rafe. There's a little profile going on. <laughs> well, if, he, at because least he only wraps. You can't half get of anything. It. At least you get some <laughs> side Rafe. <laughs> you you <laughs> did get an awful lot of Hoffman, though. Yes, he yeah. did. Yes, yes, he did. His, his tidy whitey bulge was right there was in right your face. right there in your face. It's true. In your face. <laughs> but then, you know, later on, you also get, um, a, you know, a lot of naked Rafe later on. You do. Um, but but that, I thought that shot in front of the slide projector, this was, the, was I don't know why it irritates me so much. But so we see the white of the slide projector. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's the whitish it's blue white. lighting. Yeah. But when he turns around and he's got that little grin on his face, it's like, did somebody yell cut before that happened? Was yeah. he turning around to ask if that was okay? It was that a, doesn't look in character. What is that? It seemed like, I'm the Red Dragon. You get it? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> isn't that dragon. cool? Hey. I'm the, I'm the Great Red Dragon. Isn't that cool? It's awesome, I'm isn't it? I'm pretty unimpressed by the tattoo as well. Yeah. You know? I, was, I didn't like the tattoo. It's all it, black and white tribal. Tribal, yeah. It doesn't look like the painting. No, no it doesn't. I, I, that, it doesn't I, that was have, something I had a problem with, too, is the black and white. Underwhelming. Yeah. It didn't really look like he was the dragon. It looked like no. someone did a very quick Tri- tribal, art. Ink, yeah. tribal art uh, version of it. Like and a f- I, flash, tattoo flash. There, exactly. Yeah. And and I didn't even like the kimono he wore. He it actually, was very plain and it looked like a regular robe. Yeah, well, you know, exactly. That, that's, uh, that's because the costume designer said, hey, here's a kimono that his grandmother might have worn, as indicated in the book, which is what well, we're following. No, and Brett Ratner's that's like... That's not a female kimono. No. Well, no, oh, he's saying oh. that somebody probably came with Brett the Brett Ratner's like, real hey, one. can we do black? Man, I'm thinking black. Yeah, because what's or, odd or about red it? red with a black dragon on it. Can you give me one with a dragon one of those on it? sad ones that <laughs> you get and in Chinatown? And the costume Chinatown? designer's like, um, how about black? Let's just go with yeah. black. Because oddly enough, what he's wearing is really a men's kimono. Yeah. It's got the, uh, the, the men's sleeves are cut and sewn differently than, than women's are. Uh, so it's definitely not grandma's is it's what definitely, And that's the thing is... It's not grandma's, and the whole idea is, is it supposed that to be hers? it's supposed to be, 
you know, the, the, the longer sleeve, uh, you know, some kind of uh, bright pattern on it, whatever it is, it's supposed to look like something that wasn't his. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and in the other movies, it's always been right. a beautiful, you know, some kind of thing kind of, you know, it, it looks and having him have that on seems creepier to me. Yeah. That that transformation that and it's important in in the uh, uh, in the book because there's a point where he actually stops wearing the kimono and he has there's a sweatshirt or something and he throws the sweat the the sweatshirt or the sweat jacket on the painting and mm-hmm. it actually covers the painting for a while and then when the dragon is talking which we still don't yes get. yes this this movie no. I, there was a moment that no I think speaking. was obviously eighty yard to of uh, to because of losing the voice of the dragon yeah it's when he says i won't give her to you Mm -hmm. he's off screen Uh, and i think the only reason you have that obvious line of dialogue because ted tally is fairly subtle while the movie is not the mm -hmm. writer is the only reason you have that is because you lost the voice of frank langella saying give her to me and him saying no yeah. Instead, he says, I won't give her to you. So you have to fix that. Or you could just leave the voice of the dragon. Why are we afraid of that? And it's Frank Langella. It couldn't get any more awesome than that. Oh my, uh, Yeah. So so there was there was a lot of this great reveal was underwhelming in so many ways with the, with the kimono, <laughs> the okay with the tattoo, the OK. <laughs> He's not great. He's, He's just not okay. great. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> Yeah. He's the average, the average red, the dragon. Meh red dragon. <laughs> so it's hard to have a, a you know a, a definitive scene like this that's important in this storyline be so not scary and so and then they do all this and they follow it with that uh, what I call the sunset at Dollaride Mansion shot. <laughs> <laughs> Stately Dollaride Stately Manor. Dollaride Manor. It, it, it was. It was sort of like, why did we need that shot? That was really weird. <laughs> what, what, what like looked like a really like fake um, sun, sunset happening. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what what were they thinking <laughs> when they were putting this movie together. You know. So so yeah. Okay. Money. Money. Mm-hmm. Mo Be- money. Because Mo I'll tell money. you something. Unlike our favorite television series, this movie made some money. Yeah. Well, you know, y- you had some screen time for some amazing people, I guess. <laughs> um, well, there is a scene where Emily Watson is very good. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the tiger scene. Oh, yeah. Though that tiger is incredibly terrifyingly active throughout this scene. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like terrifying. Like moving active. and... But, but she's really great in, in that scene and the scene that follows where she's mapping the house mm-hmm. and then telling Dollaride what those at work think because she's got that smile on her face. I really like the way she did that. Yeah. A- the, the way she, you know, tried to reassure him that, you know, you know they, they don't say the things you think they're saying. Right. They actually think you're kind of buff yeah. and they're, you're worried about your face and you shouldn't. There was a great, like flirtatiousness Mm -hmm. and the i i i i really want you to know that you're hot you're pretty cool i like you (laughs) yeah and it was i like the way she played it yeah we gotta we gotta do this i know you have some homework to do which as we talked about during that scene in uh in the show um, disturbing was him watching the next family. It looked like the next yes, family, right? It's the we, next family. Okay. It's not the it's Leeds. Not the Leeds it's not the Leeds or the Kajakobis. No. Uh, okay, so he's watching his next family yes. while Reba makes her uh, her impulsive blowjob move. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which we shockingly get less of in, what, in this show. Why did I write heaving boobs? Because <laughs> flames there's a, there's a on point the side of your face. face. There's, heaving, heaving. there's a point where he looks over at her and it's a oh, yeah, he's, shot of he's, her chest. With the, the camera oh, pans down. That's this happens. what it is. Yeah. The, yeah, it's the profile. The just... glorious Panavision widescreen of Emily Watson's yeah. chest. And it's yes. like, and she's breathing yeah. in the sweater deeply. Yeah. yeah. It's like Why? Ratner's going, okay, breathe a little bit more. No, no, stick them out. Yeah. Stick them out. Okay, there they we go. should have had them glow like they did in Top Secret. <laughs> like the woman clothed in the sun. <laughs> I, I I have a single line note here. Grandma looks like James Cromwell. Yes. You said that. And I was like, oh, my God, yes. 
Yes. The, the giant portrait the giant. of Grandma in the in the hallway, while may have the voice of Ellen Burstyn, has the face, face of James of Cromwell. James Cromwell. <laughs> it, it it was a really uh like yeah it was a, it was a creepy grandma painting yeah it, it told, but you know she needed to be you know creepy. <laughs> there oh, are so okay. many perplexing things in my notes here. Like why did we need the voiceover of the lawyer's letter to Will? about the things he was sending. This minor Southern lawyer character mm -hmm. gets a full voiceover read of the letter he sent to Will accompanying the effects. Oh my God. I didn't even, but did, we did don't I even get write anything about the this? red dragon voice. Nope. No dragon, but Byron Metcalf lawyer extraordinaire oh, yeah. yep. gets a voice. Our Southern lawyer. Uh, another one of those like weirdly, I know we're kind of going all over the place because I'm trying to find where Metcalf is in, in, in Well, my you notes. may not have deemed it worthy of I may notes. not, yeah. For some reason. It just made me angry. Yeah. I just know uh, I wanted to note that um, uh, after we see uh, uh, James Cromwell, Grandma and uh, uh, Rafe is having his moment where he threatens to blow his brains out that how he figures out that the uh, print, the the original is at the Brooklyn Museum. <laughs> it's not that um, he enters the Brooklyn Museum and we find out that's where the painting is. We have to pan down and find out that On this is a cheap yeah. um, museum poster on on his red dragon poster his red in dragon the attic poster is, is a museum the, poster well, and yeah. and the best part is that's not how he realizes it because he's been corresponding with the brooklyn yes. museum for months so it's useless all it is is that insulting it's movies. movie for dummies exactly mm -hmm. spoon feeding I, it's not enough because it's true they've been taught it's like he bought it so obviously he should know <laughs> that it's from he clearly bought it at the Brooklyn at Museum. At the Brooklyn Museum, or I don't know, maybe he had it mail ordered to him. I don't know. <laughs> From the catalog. From the catalog, exactly. Because because it's the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't buy that shit on Amazon at that point, <laughs> and have it. <laughs> not you know, there's no Amazon Prime. It's not no. going to show up at your yeah, house the next two day. Days. No drones going to deliver you it. Can order day you order your very own Red Dragon print, <laughs> right? And have it here tomorrow, tomorrow. motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Tomorrow. No, he had to write for that. Write a check. And, or a money order. <laughs> Had to wait six to eight weeks for delivery. Yeah. <laughs> but, Boy, catalog delivery was not a good time in America. No, no, it was. It was a lot, wanna, a lot of waiting. I want to talk about two pretty good scenes that are only good because they're basically Silence of the Lambs. Okay. Um, Hannibal gives Will the incredibly obtuse Robin Redbreast in a cage puts all of heaven in a rage. Yes. Which is a Blake quote. Which Will has to then go to a bookstore to look up, you know? Yeah. But it's it's very much like the yourself storage thing. It's one of those Hannibalisms that's just like, well, why would he tell me that? Yeah. Maybe it means, means something. something. Out but of I, all the things he said, yes. that one thing apparently means something. But I also like the way Hannibal requests his dinner and a show. Hmm. It's very much like, I want a place with a view. Maybe you see a river, water. You know, from but you have to hear oh, he's, Anthony he's, Hopkins. He's, oh, and, say and that. this is this is why it's wonderful. Yeah. This is this is why it's worth seeing this movie only for Anthony. We we should cut Anthony Hopkins into Manhunter. But, <laughs> yes, but poor Brian Cox, but who I, is perfectly I, serviceable. Hannibal exactly, Walter. I still love Brian Cox, but I have to say though, Hopkins Hannibal is so creepy, like oh, yeah. in in a wonderfully delicious way. Just the what he does with his eyes and what he does with his face and the inflection of his voice and that oddly uh, continental Atlantic yeah. accent that well, he has. You know, has. his accent was inspired by Catherine Hepburn. Oh, that interesting. Is, that is what Anthony Hopkins has uh, – and how. He mm. basically combined Hal 9000 and Catherine Hepburn that and that's the voice of him. completely makes sense why – it's mesmerizing. It makes you uncomfortable, but you can't stop listening to yeah. it. And his presence is creepy. You know, even though they do a lot of, you know, cheap jump, jump <laughs> scares where he's, he's tethered. He's, he's, like, he, feels he's on the rush the of panic. <sighs> yeah, exactly. And it's he, like, you know, he's three feet away from you. Why are you panicking? What yeah, is going on? He's on a freaking leash. 
What? Are you behind the line that says do not cross God, this line? Then, then I think you're fine. Come on, Will Graham. You're supposed to be this badass guy. Right. And then we get to do the walk and talk while he's yes. on a leash. Yes. Like it's like he's in a dog run or something. It's and, the West Wing. So like. <laughs> right. I have to do a walk and talk. I know. We'll put him on a leash. Um, and, and there's a, uh, there is a point here where there's a jump scare. I don't even know what it is. I went, oh, jump scare. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we all had that ooh jump scare thank you moment. Uh, uh we had we had the 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 movie sin racking the shotgun for absolutely no reason. For no reason. Yes, why do people still do that? It's like, yeah, let's waste a shell by racking the yeah. Oh, Lecter scaring the waiter, I thought was delightful. The guy who's serving him soup and oh, he looks yeah. up and Lecter's right there and he goes, "Thank you." Thank you. <laughs> And and uh, he gets to taunt Chilton with his little toast to the camera, and Chilton's yeah. just watching him mm-hmm. furious. Furious. Barney, thrilled. Yes. Thinks that's hilarious. Uh, we get the incredibly silly eating of the painting. Yes. Incredibly silly here. And you pointed out that the woman presenting the painting is not wearing gloves. Yep. I totally yeah. wrote not, not wearing gloves. Just like no later no. when Will looks through the big book of murder, he's not wearing yeah. gloves. Yeah. That's if you're not dealing how we handle evidence. <laughs> yeah. It, except, and that's something about both except things. Except like, when you're the guy who's hired to pretend you're the um the janitor to fool Dr. Lecter. You wear gloves and then you leave them hanging out of your pocket because you're an idiot. <laughs> 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 so it's going to be really noticeable. But yeah, just like you wouldn't, you know, disturb evidence. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with archived objects, um, you always wear gloves. Mm-hmm. And I, I get that she opens up the box and she actually doesn't touch the, uh, you know, the item. But I would think that if she was going to present it to him, that you would have. You know, she it, does touch the plastic sheet. Yeah. And and that's the thing is like you would want to not put the oils from yeah. your fingers anywhere on the box, mm-hmm. uh, especially something that is so well preserved and is that old. You know, it, it usually archivists the first thing they do is put the cotton gloves on. So it was kind of weird to me. It was like, why did she not? She touched the. I understand that it's in you know What's the wrong with you? plastic, but well, yeah. don't worry. It was just one of those posters, and they cut the uh, they from cut the, 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 the from the museum. museum. Yeah, made it easier for him to digest. Yeah, yeah, much much easier. But it was it was like the yeah it just it was yeah the, the way he tore it and then he's interrupted, which is more in line with <laughs> yes. the, yeah. It's just so silly. I mean, yeah. it's a really silly scene. Yeah, and then I'm like, did he finish eating the painting? Because she came in, did he shove the rest of it in? Did he leave it there? Yeah, Should the next just... line not be he ate a painting? Should it be yeah, he ate part of a painting? Well, later it'll be displayed as just the bottom part <laughs> just, of it. <laughs> just, with so, an artist rendering of yes, what the rest of it looks this, like? Well, they can use the posters. It's just <laughs> the bottom part. This is the actual painting before most of it got eaten got by eaten. a psychopath. And the way he gets <laughs> out to... They, in the book, he's, it's thought out. You know, he has the the uh, the guitar case, mm-hmm. and he has a way of getting out of there without being noticed. It's kind of you know almost bond. This is incredibly yeah. impulsive. Exactly. You know that he goes out and he's got the the what's it the the paper sack. Like he's gone grocery shopping. He winds up uh, has a track suit on, uh, like shorts oh, yeah, and running, a running right. a running suit under his suit. He takes all of that out, puts it in the uh, guitar case, and leaves it. And basically walks and then off he's a different person. with a guy who looks like he's been running and is carrying yeah. uh, a, a paper sack from a, a grocery store with like, I think he puts like a... Uh, like a, a baguette? Of, it's like a lettuce or a piece of lettuce or something like that is sticking out the top. Because really no grocery bag can be with, complete without a it baguette has to have sticking baguette. out of it. Exactly. I, I have been guilty of that. <laughs> of, of putting... It's usually... A, uh, like a like a head of green leaf lettuce yeah. and the baguette, and the baguette yeah. it fills it rather it does it's nicely nice. yeah. and it looks like groceries. Um, but yeah, it's like where it looks like he really planned it and he really planned his exit. Other than this dragon who just walks out and we're done. Desperate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do have a really nicely done scene here where Dollaride goes to the office and follows that uh, employee in. And sees Will Graham there. I yeah. thought that was really nice and subtle. Mm-hmm. And then that leads to poor Frank Whaley 
Aww. You know, Ralph. Uh, basically, the dragon says, say what again? <laughs> say what again, motherfucker? Say yeah. what? One, One more, more time. Goddamn time. And then just <laughs> shoots Ralph and takes Reba. Yeah. I will say, the ruse is far less telegraphed here. Mm-hmm. There was no moment, I mean, and I, this may be because I've seen this twice now, but there was no moment in uh, the Hannibal version where it didn't seem like a ruse that him shooting himself in the head oh, wasn't. Be- okay. And maybe it's because they went over the key and you remember how to get here and mm-hmm. you know how to get... Maybe it was that They spent more up. time with that. Yeah. This here, it's... Again, like you were like like Ophelia was saying, it's it's rushed. Yeah, um, we don't really, you know, it, it, yeah, we've already established because we've seen Ralph Mandy already. This is not the first time he's wearing that lovely tracksuit. <laughs> the first time we see him, uh, that 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 looks like he's like a porn star, seventies porn star, not yeah. really like. But I, I know they're trying to make him look smarmy and maybe not the guy at the office you want to date, but he's right. still going to go after every chick in the office. But don't worry, he's going on vacation today. Today, yeah, exactly. nobody else miss me. No, for a no week. one will miss me, <laughs> especially in his like incredibly rad members only jacket. Yeah, well, you know, you know mm-hmm. it the, was the eighties. You have to. I saw that and I was like, hey, members only jacket. <laughs> All <laughs> right. If you're going to do eighties. Got to have the members only jacket. Wait a period movie. <laughs> right. If you're going to period, you period like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, another super unsubtle moment. Hmm. Reba knows where the clock is because it's conveniently 10 o'clock. <laughs> was that? Like, and is chiming. And is chiming. At the moment. It should have. It was enough that it's just ticking. Mm-hmm. We don't, again, uh, at times not working enough. <laughs> and at times working too hard. My favorite moment watching this was you saying, oh, hell no, when the house exploded. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I have notes. I have notes. <laughs> I, have, I love it. I have notes. I, I have thoughts. <laughs> yeah, because we do. We like we skip the whole van thing. We yeah. don't see any. They're just they're just there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah the, a lot of stuff that happens in the house, again, rushed. We don't really get into um, how he's faked it about the whole thing with the with the with the key and just like sort of wakes her up. and goes right into. Right. Yeah. The feeling of the, the gun it leaves a lot of stuff out, just rushes into it and then throws some gas down. Just kicks it over just here yeah. and there. Yeah. Yeah, so please share your notes because I'm sure it's like everything I hated about the scene. Well, I mean, my notes basically are houses do not work that, that way. That, yeah, I mean, it's it's it also it's blew up from the second floor. Yes, yes. So like, whatever unless, is explosive in the house is being kept upstairs. Yes, like it mu- like the upstairs was lined with C4. Mm. Um, the it's my big pet peeve with cars that explode in movies, and it's it's even. Worse because this is a house. Yeah. It's a yeah. house. I mean, what do you store in your house? His, that's his going house to gas tank that powers his house. Oh, I guess. No. I guess if they had given some kind no, of no, idea no. that he'd been preparing for this, at least the safe that contained the book didn't fly through the air and land at Will Graham's feet. Exactly. Yeah. And then the book falls out. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the door the opens, opens up. And the Indiana book Jones falls out. tumbles out. And then the book. <laughs> Actually, I was oh, disappointed that when the, nice. that when the house exploded, they weren't running in slow-mo. No. You know, and, like, and the thing explodes. explodes like slow. So, and then they like fall to, towards and the camera. Pieces are shooting. And, and Will Graham, he's, he house. looks at it with squinty eyes as the fire is exactly. the lighting on his face yeah yeah there there, there is like so much cliche uh, that just, was done and it was i wouldn't have a little blew extra up, I was, movie for you guys yeah. here's some movie. now if if they wanted us to believe that he had set the house up to you know burn in such a way that no evidence inside would be um usable then they should have like you said sort of set it up to see that he had put something explosive or yeah. added more or containers more gasoline of gasoline containers. or yeah. but even so that's not how that's things not the burn. kind of explosion yeah that's that's a c4 explosion mm-hmm. that is what they've what they've done is they did dynamite yeah. stuff it's very it seems very much the typical director i'll make it bigger yeah it's you wanted an big. explosive finish yeah it's got to oh, be bigger ha- houses can burn hot and fast without exploding yeah. Especially when the room with the evidence you really want to 
uh, keep. It burns down. Well, the room with the evidence is completely filled with gasoline. Yes. That room is going to burn. The, the The second floor of the house doesn't need to explode. Yeah. No. no, it doesn't. You just need to burn, you know, poor smarmy Mandy enough mm-hmm. <laughs> to look like he could be anybody. Yeah. You don't really need to. And I'm trying to remember in the book if. If if it explodes, I'm sure there is not a line in Thomas's Harris's work saying Thomas's the Harris's. house the house exploded. No, it doesn't. I yeah, I have to because I, I really don't remember. I know As that Will Graham looks off. I uh, I know that that it's it's like a it's a tremendous fire. Yeah, but I can't remember if there's any notes in there. Well, that, I that... I believe the they arrived later. Um, because Reba was just sort of wandering. Yeah, because I think don't there don't aren't there. They're driving to it, and they see the fire in the distance. Yeah, yes, and that's when they're the like, "Oh, in the that must be where it is." Yes, that is what happens. And they get there, and it's true. Uh, she's been wandering for a while. Yeah. when when they find her, can we talk about the horrible exchange in the hospital? Yes, uh, where Will gets all the good lines. Horrible. Like they, yeah. they take all the lines and give them to Will. He and, is. Yeah. He is. Douchebag. Do I yeah, actually wrote major douche when um, talking about her hair? I wrote she? Will is the Fonz. Uh, I don't know why I wrote that, but I think when you're talking about you mentioned worse than that, the that that he's like a douchebag, douchey McDouche douchebag. That like, was no, like, you're awesome, except for your hair. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Fix that before yeah. I come back. I oh, was like, I know. oh, I hated you that bastard. Line. This guy is a yeah. dick. I hated that. Th- I mean, that he made fun of her hair and fixed that one. There was a lot. There was a lot of. Uh, I don't know. I guess misogyny that I kind of picked up on in in that exchange. Yeah, he delivers all the lines himself, and it's supposed to all be a, a yeah. witty banter. Yeah. The you didn't draw a freak. I I yeah. was so upset. Yeah, that that he said that. It's just like out of you know. It's 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 almost apropos of nothing. You didn't draw a freak. It was a you drew a man with a freak on his back. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very tender ex- so exchange. Terrible. Yeah. It's even written that way in the book. It's just so why butchered. Make him into this like asshole. I don't know. At a time because wh- he's cool. No, that's he, no. That's really what this movie is telling us is that Will Graham, Graham is, is super cool. cool. But you know what? There was no way you could make Edward Norton cool in this movie. <laughs> Not in this movie. No, no, no. He looked like some teenager. Edward Norton did this cool. movie for a paycheck, and that paycheck paid for the twenty fifth hour. That uh, is why Edward Norton is in this movie. Wow. Period. Well, and it comes across in his yeah. performance. Unfortunately, <laughs> at the end of every scene, it's just like, okay, I got to go pick up my check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it was this that that their exchange was so disappointing <sighs> for me, and that left me that made me very uncomfortable. Ruined it when he said that, and again, it was like, why add that? Why put that in? I don't yeah. know. It it did it's, seem. And why does her hair look seemed... so much worse at the hospital than it did? Outside, outside the exploding the explosion. explosion. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she's been pulling at it. I don't know. Yeah. Why well, am I in this a, movie? Why character. am I in this movie? <laughs> so so really what you're saying is that that was just Emily Watson's uh moment of, of clarity. Of clarity. Like, like, like this what is, am I doing? This is her rock bottom. Yeah. Like she woke up in that hospital and be like, oh shit. Wow, did I really just do this? People are gonna see this. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you feel like you want to get you need to get away? Yeah. <laughs> to prove even more that Will is cool guy, he gets to have a, a heartfelt moment with Molly uh about how he feels sorry for Dolaride. Uh-huh. Because he's just a because, monster. Because he, he read made. the big book of murder. The big with, book of murder book with, book. with all the stories about how he was abused. Mm-hmm. And he's like, This guy, man, this guy really likes Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah. It took me an entire movie to figure that. And out. He did not like the word tooth fairy. No, he, he had a real He's, problem with people calling him yeah. a tooth fairy. He marked that out like red mark. But, but you know what's funny? Will is just as much a douchebag about his son in this scene well, because he sends his son in to get stuff. And he's like, "What's taking him so long?" What's that? I want yeah. marshmallows. I, I want am. marshmallows now. Yeah, he was like a <laughs> real dick at the end of the movie. He is not likable at all no. in, the, in the last Would we scenes. need him to be likable? Yes. And if I can't say it enough, in the books, we feel for them. We can definitely we compare this... with without question oh. to the books. It is it is a, a film adaptation's job to at least adapt the the core of a book. You right. don't have to adapt like you you don't have to adapt everything, but you have to adapt 
tonally what the book is. Exactly. Unless it, you're Charlie Kaufman, and then you can just do whatever, whatever the fuck, the fuck you, you want. want. <laughs> exactly. But here, I think, I think it's just, it's at a disservice. Oh, yeah. Because Will's transformation isn't from uh, Harold Bowl detective to, to douchebag during the course of this <laughs> are film. You, are you sure? Because I think that's his character arc. He <laughs> even has frosted tipped hair. Like yeah, I don't know his, if anybody his noticed. His hair got weird. The blonde. I, thought, well, I noticed the, the same the little idea, frost. The idea the is that he spends a lot of time in the salon. I don't salon. care what the idea is. He looks like he spends a lot of time in a salon. He, yeah. he looks like Affleck in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> Look at these two morose motherfuckers <laughs> right here. <laughs> so what you're saying is that uh, you know, Will has been going out. It's like, with, hey, Will, uh, get out of the yeah. salon he's, and he's, get back into he's, the He's, he's been spraying the, sun in, the in his hair. Yes, yes. <laughs> to get that frosted. Spray sun. I, I could see him with like the, the reflective That's very 80s, screen actually, laying, sun in. laying down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Sun in was big in the sun, 90s. Too. Yeah. That was around for a long time. Probably. Yeah, from like all, the 70s all on. All of the eras this film that, this spans. This film spans. So it is. It works well. It rolls them all into one. To do, to do something. Including the 2000s. <laughs> I don't know. I guess he just looked more of like the surfer dude. He yeah. did. Than, than the guy no, he, who works on boats. He, he yeah. was so... That, and that's... That's what's so much uh, so offensive about this version of the character mm-hmm. is he is not damaged in any way. No. He is not affected by the murder she's seeing nope. or the fact that he gets gutted at the beginning he's of the movie. He's disaffected when he's walking through the crime scene. Yeah. yeah. Like not just disaffected that he's seen a lot of murder. He's disaffected when he's being faced with the evidence of something horrific. He's yeah. just yeah. like, meh, whatever. Yeah, all the, all the, the, all the blood time. and all the, the way he's looking at... The the uh, the blood stains on the wall. Yeah. It was. It was sort of like it was too it clinical. Really... It was too disconnected from from the scene. Yeah. And the whole idea is that Will is so connected and tortured he, by this tortured, connection yeah. Yeah. of between him and the serial killers. Mm-hmm. Like tortured by the fact that he can get into their minds, yeah. and that it's supposed to be this this inner turmoil. And he he's he's freaked out by his own abilities and mm-hmm. you don't get any of that i no, mean this is this is white bread walking through this yeah. that's that's all he is he yeah. is just generic and so, and so at the end you don't get this the like the culmination no mm-hmm. of all of that of having to go back and talk to the person who stabbed him yeah. and, right. and, and who did horrific things while he Something was trying so to... terrible that he quit yes Exactly. He doesn't. We don't he, even. Really, he looks like went, a guy who went on a two week vacation. Was put away for a while. Yeah. Like actually had to go yeah. to a, a mental, a mental institution. institution afterwards. Because they yeah. do talk about that. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's one of the newspaper montages. Yeah, the right. montage. Right. They don't talk about it. It's like the Yeah. I forgot what it was. Yeah. I forgot the headline, but it, they there, do there's mention. There's a couple it. of headlines where they talk about him going in to the mental facility because they use you know all that. um uh, you know, loony bin and things like that. Uh, but that's the only time they really talk about it. Right. It, it's because, it's, because it's unimportant for the character. That title sequence actually tells a better story than the rest oh, of this than movie. Than the rest of this movie. Exactly. Because that title sequence tells a compelling, cohesive story. Yeah. It really does. And then they don't give us a, a very good relationship between Will and Molly. No, no it's, they it's don't, surface. They, it's all surface. Yeah, they don't give a talented actress a whole lot to do. She spends a lot of time just sort of like fretting and biting her nails. And I'm like, this is someone who is actually capable of so much more than this so much more depth and all she's doing is being pacey and and freddy if sort of fretting not really um expressing how this is going to damage their relationship right. how she's going to deal with his absence the the uh, intensity of what's going to happen not even how much she hates jack is right. coming across yeah i mean she makes strongly. a comment but it's so underwhelming it's very flippant what? and yeah yeah. The scene doesn't matter. And the, and then the fact that they do that hippie thing with her and it's just about her being in this tank in the the little halter dress yeah. and the torn up and the torn up jeans. They don't they don't give her any meatiness to mm-hmm. her place in this whole story. She's not there just to conveniently be there to do a jump scare at the end of the movie. She's not even super convincing with the defense of her of her son. Like, yeah. No. That, that came across in... 
Well, she, all she does is sit up in bed when she hears the the prowler outside her house. Right. Yeah. She sits up until the FBI lights shine in her window, and oh, we have to get you out of oh, here. Oh, it's a yeah. helicopter. Yeah. yeah. They don't give. Yeah, she doesn't. They don't even give us a moment of suspense where we think it's him. Right. 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 It's like maybe a. Uh, Five seconds yeah. or yeah. something before Sits we up, get kid comes in. Okay, it helicopter. wasn't the prowler, it was the kid. Oh, then the helicopter. The helicopter. Oh, I guess the FBI. Yeah. 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 They they lost a lot of uh, opportunity. There was no tension. Yeah. And there really should have been at the end here. And even with Dollaride being in the house. The only and... tension is why didn't Will tell Molly Dollaride was coming out yeah. was was there? It's true. Why? Why isn't he yelling that immediately? Bring He's your upstairs. gun. He's up here. Yeah. Maybe he thought by Get being the quiet. Guns. He it wouldn't. He wasn't going to accelerate. On well, see, the thing is, know, to, is if, to her. He, if he yelled at Molly to do that, I don't think Dollarhide would have gone to get her. He would have gone to the source of the yelling yeah. uh, to shut up the yelling. Yeah, it did seem kind of odd, like that whole sequence on the on that on the top. Uh, it, it doesn't well, yeah. make any sense. The, the 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 way it played out yeah. was just, yeah. just terrible, scrambled. And then you just. Just go ahead no and sense. yell at your son for peeing in his pants. You know what? I don't care that that's your gambit. I don't yeah. care. That kid is going to be more traumatized by what his dad said to him than by the than serial the killer holding a gun. Well, they all, well, I think a what, they, gun. what they were trying to play there is that the boy will understand. Oh, I know what that, they were trying what, that to he do. He wasn't actually, that he didn't mean it. That it yeah. was, you know, th- this was trying to trigger a reaction from the serial killer because the serial killer's grandmother was abusive. <sighs> so I kind of, I kind of get what they, how how they were trying to play that, so it that we didn't hate him for doing it. But it was, and it, and it was interesting that he would do it to the boy and not to to Dollar. And I really think it also it doesn't serve the character of Dollar Dollarhide at this point because. If if he's had his becoming, yes, and he has the power of the great red dragon, mm-hmm. would he really be affected by Will talking like his grandmother? You know what it is. It's um, it's that weird moment in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two where the girl convinces Jason that she's his mother. Oh yeah. But Jason yeah. only fell for it for a moment. For a moment, yeah. Apparently, Francis is... And then the even weirder moment in Friday the 13th Part 4, where Corey Feldman convinces Jason that he's Jason. Wow. Well, you know, once you get to four, <laughs> they just get a little diluted. throwing a whole lot of stuff out the window. But I, I feel like, too, part of what fails in this scene is that he doesn't stick with the dialogue of the grandmother. Yeah, but we know that. The, I mean, well, he, he first does of all, the cut it off thing. First yeah. of all, we don't know that Will should even have that knowledge. In fact, he probably should. Well, that's he probably what shouldn't. really bothers me about it is that he wouldn't know all that. Yeah, but he he takes it way too far. I mean, with the use of the words that he chooses and um, just he he takes it way beyond. I think that. You could see that Dollarhide was affected mm-hmm. early on in him yelling at his son for peeing his pants. Um, but he just kept going and going and going. I think he already like kind of pulled the glass away. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the scene kind of just kept going. It goes on even, too long. Even though it didn't need to mm-hmm. progress any ugly. farther. Yeah, yeah and it, it did. did. And uncomfortable. It, it got... It got to a point where, like, okay, we we see what you're doing. You're trying to use his bad memories of his grandmother, against him, yeah. and you want him to sympathize with the son, mm-hmm. so that he, so doesn't, he doesn't kill hurt him. the son. Yeah. But he comes after Will instead. He mm-hmm. wants to make himself the demon. But I feel like he succeeded in doing that a minute before the yeah. scene continues, and it's just and, I don't know, and, and it's, really it's too much. What it comes down to is. The original ending was fine for everybody else. It was, mm. except Why for, for Manhunter it... yeah. or Hannibal the series. Really, it was fine for only <laughs> only Thomas Harris. <laughs> only yeah. Thomas Harris. But, uh, but nobody and else... And for all the readers who loved it. Yeah, nobody yeah. else went this far no. off track, is what I'm saying. Everyone right, else right. kind of still went down that... I mean, the, the series had painted itself into a corner. Yeah. Mm. So it, it because they had certain things that already happened and they couldn't have happened again. Well, and Manhunter yeah. and, has Dollaride just kill himself when he supposedly blows his head. Or, we, no, I have no idea. I, have, I don't remember. 
we'll know, have to, to remember. We'll have to have watched that before last before, week's episode. Exactly, which we have not done yet in the timey wimey yes. time. I got halfway through it and I haven't rewatched the end yet, so I'm trying to remember. Will but, kills Dollaride. Yeah. But I know he I don't know. But it it's <laughs> not they they don't feel the need to use a, a like a terrible device like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still an action sequence with Dollaride. With Inagata DeVita. It would be, exactly. <laughs> and you know, and Dollaride is they're able to over you know overcome him without using something weird like this thing with the kid. Yeah. It all sort of makes sense. They, they take what they need from that scene. You know, Molly doesn't really get her moment of glory, but it still sort of makes sense. She They've does just, a triple tap. Though. Yeah. No, it, <laughs> she does. Yeah. Pow, pow, pow. She, exactly. She yeah, it shoots him in the side of the face, which I mm-hmm. liked. When, yeah. when he gets the bullet in the cheek, that was kind of cool. Uh, but it... it, it it's like now if she's going to get her moment of glory. Then she breaks down in, in into standard cliche crying fit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I killed him, but oh. I would have much <laughs> rather have had, a, you know, a tumultuous scene battling the dragon. And then here comes Molly and just blows him away. It has to have that moment of where she's not told to by Will. Yeah. You know, there's there, there's there's no other scene with the there's there's nothing else other than her realizing he's going to die if I don't just do something right now. And having to overcome whatever fear she has or, you know, or res- well, reservations reser- about taking a life. Uh, exactly. Because that moment of doing that is not easy for someone who's not a law enforcement office officer. Right, and you've or... never really contemplated. But that's the other thing. She has contemplated. Mm-hmm. They show us mm-hmm. in this movie where she's shooting and, and learning to shoot a gun. So it's not like it's a foreign concept. She probably has thought about what am I going to do mm-hmm. if he comes after my family? Yeah, I'm so going to have to defend myself. I, I would think that this decision wouldn't take as long. Mm-hmm. For her to make. Yeah. But, or, or I think it wouldn't destroy her the way it does. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Well, no, I think you're right. And, and that would have happened if the characters had been better developed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the director thought about it at all. At all. I don't know. At yeah. all. Or understood what was going yeah. on. Like, she can be affected by it. She can be, you know, she could be, she could be tearing up, but not sobbing uncontrollably as though this yeah. is completely foreign to her. And I, and I think it took My the God, strength away from her. what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think she should be stunned and shocked the way that our other Molly was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that she should be a, a blubbering mess. Yeah. The, yeah. There was a lot of that. That Exactly. I think that she may have been later on. When, well, yeah. you know, when she's not in when shock. When things you know, sink, trauma, sink yeah. in. Because yeah. that, that is how shock works. Yeah. Shock actually shuts down your emotions mm-hmm. because it is not in your best interest in the fight or flight reaction for you to get all emotional. Right. Like this, you, is, this is one of those great moments where she should have just kept until clicking the gun. Until the gun was Even dead. when it's not right. shooting, just kept it, clicking it and then just drop it and be shocked. Yeah. That's a powerful character moment. Mm-hmm. And then maybe go to Will, who's been shot. Been shot. shot, yeah. Instead of collapsing on the floor. How about you take care of the fucking house? I know. Because that, that is how your brain would work. You get the heightened sense of adrenaline, and you you deal with the situation. You kill Dollar Hyde. Then you realize, okay, I still have two other people in this mm-hmm. house. I gotta to make sure my yeah. son is okay. Yeah. My son's okay. That's fine. Okay. Poor kid this peed guy's himself been... and got yelled at by his dad. <laughs> yeah. And called a bad name. Yeah. And then you see the other person who's been shot. You take care of the person who's been shot. That you process later. Right. Yeah. You 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 go break into down survival later. Mode. Except yeah. for yeah. in movie for dummies mode where we need the processing now because it's a more dramatic part for a woman. So we're right. just going to let the guy who's been just shot bleed out. Because the woman's collapse into Because she's a woman. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you expect, ladies? <laughs> wow, don't you <laughs> dare take that tone with me. <laughs> I would, this little playlet was me being Brett Ratner, by the way. Okay. Well, well and apparently I also Brett Ratner really don't was like Brett Ratner. He was. He was directing me. Well, yeah. I wasn't very good. Wasn't yeah. I? <laughs> a little underwhelming there. <laughs> That's how you know he was directing. Well played. Fully committed. Because I, I was, you know, I really half-assed it. 
Um, oh, please. So Will and Molly sail away. Oh, my God. This yeah. was so I bad. Know. While we get Hannibal's it letter. It reminded me yes. of, uh, what was it? Bad bad things? Not bad things. Wild mm. things? Oh, my goodness. Wild things? Was it wild things? Wild things is the one where in the credits, sailing. like, they give you all sorts of new information about the movie. New information about the Yeah, because the whole movie's like this mystery puzzle box, and then you learn, like, half of what actually was happening in the closing uh, credits. Oh, I don't remember wow. that movie at all. I just remember the end, they sail away. Then, well, it may be. I, I only or remember that. she sails that. away, and, and she, she kills the guy off the boat, and she sails away. Anyway. It's just what it reminded me of. But we get Hannibal's letter where we get the wonderful line, I hope you're not Not too too ugly. ugly. And never forget who gave you the best of your scars. Mm -hmm. That's that's lovely. But why did he say, do you dream much, Will? Because he (laughs) said that earlier in the film. Three times. I believe it was three times. Three times. See, I I, I know at least twice. I think he said it when they first meet, Mm -hmm. when Will first comes to him. Then he says it again when Will... um, comes to see him about i think the second time he gets advice mm-hmm. and then they say it again here i could be wrong yeah somebody can correct well, me if i know like, it was i know I feel like it was sure three times it was in the first scene with Lecter because yes, that's it was. that's what the the line that made uh william peterson's will graham bolt out of the asylum and run down that awesome getty mm. staircase but here it doesn't make any sense no there, mm-hmm. it's Lecter goading Will. It's yes. like, hey, remember when you used to have nightmares because you do this thing that fucks you up? Yeah. You dream much now? Exactly. You dream because you're coming to see me? You and dream about the time I penetrated you? Yes. Whoa. Wow. Penetrated you. <laughs> anyway. You totally did. You did. Got Ruff- right up in close. Roughly. <laughs> Most roughly. <laughs> okay. He did. He derailed me. Um... <laughs> you're thinking about Dr. Lecter penetrating Will? It doesn't have to be this Dr. Lecter penetrating no. this will. No, we don't want to think about this no. Dr. Lecter um, penetrating this will. No, the the dreams, the <laughs> yes, dreams and the dreams. being tortured. One of the things that I thought was pretty impressive about Manhunter and in the book, um, well, maybe not impressive, but I feel like told a lot about this tortured inner soul of will was waking up next to Mrs. Leeds in bed. Yes. Yeah. And... Honestly, I don't think it could have saved this movie. They could have thrown that in there, and I still wouldn't have been convinced. Because it would have done half-assed. Or I, I still wouldn't have been convinced or overdone. that and this she would have been naked. Yeah. is Heaving boobs. Oh, bloody, oh yeah. Yeah, heaving bloody boobs. That, heaving bloody that boobs. Is, that is the version of oh. this scene, that scene that you want, that, that you're glad that they didn't do I'm glad do they it. didn't do it, especially if they did it that way. Heaving but I feel boobs. like even if they had thrown that in there, I still wouldn't have been convinced that this Will Graham is tortured by no. his dreams. Yeah. So it's even extra <laughs> out of place yes. that, that Hannibal would mention dreams not when they don't by anything. show him being tortured by dreams. Right. No, they didn't do that at all. He didn't seem tortured about anything. No. No. At n- that none of this was really had any, uh, it didn't have any consequence. It didn't have, you know, that, that really did bother me because I think that's, so essential. Mm-hmm. You know, to, that's to what this the, it is that's the what Will Graham is supposed to between be. Between Will Graham and every other investigator. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is what makes He's you know, supposed to be different than any other yeah. cop. He's supposed to be different than any other detective. Well, no, I mean, I'm talking character wise. That's, you know, Francis Dollaride being well um, explored is really great character wise. Mm-hmm. But what makes Red Dragon different is the character of Will Graham is not like any other character right. in in this genre. In the genre. He just isn't. Yeah. He's not the average gumshoe guy that comes no. in and just happens to have, you know, a, a, a great skill at And detecting. he's certainly not exactly what uh, Edward Norton portrays, right. which is like every other detective that was in that era. And, and the fact that he's so flawed. Yeah. Yet so geniusly good at what he does, that that sort of that dichotomy. There, so yeah. good he notices that there might have been a dog. Yeah, from just the clues of a dog bed, a picture of the family with the dog, <laughs> and a dog house in the yard. Yeah, they and, and they did. They they didn't really like, like address some of the things that he thought of. No, you know, like oh, well, what about this? Or uh, you know, talking about uh, the way he talked about the bolt cutter. Mm-hmm. And the way he was, he kept like trying to figure it out. It, 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 that's like magical when mm. when they do it, where he's sitting there and he's trying to figure out. Well, how do they know? And he goes through the whole process of really, well, you know, the the the, the, the seller. 
It's, it's, you know, that had a bolt. It's different. It's a different cellar door. They really undersold that. It whole took a scene long here. time for him to come to that conclusion. It should have taken less time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Considering he's sitting there watching the video. But, Where yeah. there's a yeah. deadbolt. Yeah. yeah. It, it did. It, 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 and it him... showed it to the audience. Yeah. Like, hey, look over here. This basement door has a deadbolt. Yeah. And now they're talking about why he brought big, giant, uh, Hey, hey, do you guys do you guys understand now? Movie for oh, dummies. Now Will Graham's gonna get it. Yeah. I oh, wanna make sure you guys got it first. There was a lot <laughs> of that. They did. They did a lot hey, of psst, let audience. me show it to you. Hey, check it out. Check it out. And this that's what... that's Brett Ratner sitting in the seat next to yeah. us saying, By and the then way, they, yeah. that's why he brought the pole cutter. You see that? Watch yeah. this part. Is this, this is so part. cool. This is important. You should pay attention. Yeah. And they but, do, it. and that's that's the thing. If the audience is being shown the evidence before the special special agent gets it, yeah, we should not get it. Get no, but we shouldn't around. get it first. So we're not sitting there yelling at the screen. Look at the bolt of the. Look at the. Cellar he should be door. ten steps ahead of us, yeah. not one step behind. It should be when he says that we're like, oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It should be. It should be something that we have to go back and be like, hey, we should rewatch that scene because I think we missed something. Right. Yeah. I, and, and a the, copy like, of the, Mrs. The the Doubtfire. Thing. They must be from the future. Sure. <laughs> He's a the, time both, traveler. Both families are from the future. <laughs> Is there a DeLorean around? That's somewhere? what they have in. Come. Well, it was the 80s. It was the 80s. Yeah. So, so they you know, actually DeLorean. should have. be a DeLorean. A DeLorean. It's in the shop all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but they own one. Was it 88 miles an hour? Yeah. 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 Well, so let's talk about the Nick Fury moment in this movie. <laughs> the Nick Fury moment? Yeah, I don't the, know what you're talking let's about. Let's tie the series together. You know, the, and it's funny because I was going to say that. It was like, we're talking about, you know, hey, look at this. You get it? You get it? The you get it? There's another movie coming up that's called Silence of the Lambs. Offensive moment of that was the end of this film. <laughs> oh, now I know what you're saying. Okay. I'm oh, like, yeah. Nick Fury moment. What are you talking about Nick Fury yeah, no, for? No, the end of the credits yes, sequence. Yes, yes, so yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. Here's my, you know, there's a lot of problems with this scene. I'm Her gonna let you talk Clarice. about how offensive it is. But um I have an issue with the fact that Chilton appears to have come all the way downstairs to Hannibal Lecter's uh, cell to say, I'm gonna just send this girl away, to then go all the way back upstairs mm -hmm. to see Clarice and have that great conversation with Clarice, to then take Clarice all the way downstairs back, yeah. to be told not to come in and see Hannibal. I don't I don't believe that for At a all. second. It's cheap. This was really, really it cheap. Is cheap. And I was insulted. The the end of my notes actually says overall feels cheap and hurried. <laughs> Those are my notes. <laughs> the ending And I that applies was... for the whole film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was there was a lot of cheap gags, yeah. a lot of cheap I have I have that in the sidelines in a, in several places. Mm. And I thought this ending was cheap and I think it sort of undervalued the audience. Yeah. We know what's coming next. We know. Well, really, the reason why we're watching this movie is because, is because what of what's coming. supposedly came next. Well, you, you don't want to reference a better film in your film. <laughs> <and> this movie <laughs> like, hey, falls prey to that sin so much. Look how far we've fallen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like, they should just, the story should just bookend each other. With an indeterminate amount of time in between. No, but instead, it's, it's, it's moments. Like, let's just yeah, bring it, it all is. the it's way up. It's literally Will has been kicked to the curb. Yeah. He's, you know, off sailing the ocean blue, <laughs> whatever it is. Everybody's cool. He's going he's gonna to go to Italy he's, and solve mysteries. Right, exactly. He's going to be the bubbling With Inspector detective. Inspector Rinaldo Pazzi. <laughs> in, in Italy. And, or the bumbling, you think he's going to become Clouseau. Clouseau. <laughs> in this movie? <laughs> That's not no, too far. No, uh, uh, Edward Norton could not pull off. Clouseau. He couldn't. He couldn't pull off. Too douchey. Yeah. Too too, too, uh, too many things. <laughs> too, many, too, too, too many, many things. Too many reasons. Too, too many. Much. Too, too many much. reasons. But to but to then basically like lead up to okay, we've just finished this, and now we're gonna go straight into yeah. Clarice is there. So here, go get your copy of Silence of Lambs and just put it on because it'll flow seamlessly. Seamless. Exactly. And I don't know why that And you'll never know me. how bad this movie was. <laughs> I mean, even... Yeah, maybe you'll have forgotten by the time by you that, finish yeah. Silence of Lambs. Because that... you'll be like, wow, Silence of Lambs is so great. So we can end <laughs> with, um, you know, 
12 year, uh, uh, actually it's like 22 or something like that. When you add how the differences between the yeah. movies of, of how old Lecter is, mm-hmm. you know, to where he you is. You definitely the next movie, tell the difference now. It's like, Oh, let's have a really like a close up and an intense thing. And then just lead right into the other movie that happened like 11 years earlier. And, and makes, what's her name? Yeah. I mean, Oh yeah. What, why? Why does Hannibal Lecter care about a name? Yes. Yes. Hannibal Lecter would never care about something That's so trite. So bothered me. It really did. Why would he ask? He wouldn't care. I yeah. mean, really. And it wouldn't change his mind. That right. that whole scene is only there. So in middle America, some guy just went to his date. <laughs> it's good. It's Clarice. Exactly. That's it's what Clarice. I was saying. It, it's, it's one of those oh my God. elbow, like, oh my God, I yeah. figured it out. It's, it's basically so sitting next to Brett Ratner. He wanted you to be Brett Ratner on the way home. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> do you remember that you part yeah. where the, it's Clarice is going to be oh my God. You know it's Let's Clarice. go home and watch Silence of Lambs. Yeah. Let's go buy it. <laughs> Let's go buy it. Let's go. Yeah. Oh dear! Just Paper, think of, of when this comes out on VHS. We can watch them back to, to back. Back to back. We'll play Dark Side of the Moon at the same time. So if yeah, everything syncs up. That's that's Red Dragon. Yep. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it is. It is. I will say worse than I remember it. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember seeing this movie, and I I said at the beginning I was like either either I don't remember seeing it. Or you because it, it was out. so bad, and I blocked it out. Or I actually haven't seen it. I couldn't tell the difference. I didn't. I didn't know if I sublimin like suppressed this or if I had seen it. it. It's not suppression, but it's, it's so damaging. <laughs> well, it is memory. to somebody who's a fan of the series. Well, I, I like or a and, fan and of the book filmmaking again. I and, and <laughs> yes, exactly. Honestly, honestly, I think what it is exactly. is I uh, repressed have to be a everything fan of that Harris. Anthony Hopkins wasn't in. Ah, uh, so I basically remember this only, awesome it's, preview it's a, that only strength. has Hannibal Lecter in it. So really, the the best Red Dragon for you would just be all other scenes edited out and just all of Anthony Hopkins scenes yeah, back to back, yeah, just back to back, just back to back. No, yeah. and, and even bas- the one with with the ponytail. Well, you know, I, I just it just makes me think of how amazing Jack Nicholson's ponytail is in the Witches, <laughs> in of, the Eastwick Witches of Eastwick because you know nothing. On earth says scummier douchebag than slick back hair and a, and a ponytail. ponytail. That's true. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Edward Norton can't out douche that ponytail. <laughs> no amount of sun in or frosted tips. <laughs> no. Whoa. No. That ponytail is the most is, offensive thing in the movie. It is. And it's sad that it's on Lecter. It it's, is. Because Hannibal is not... Being douchey in this scene, he's supposed to be cool and awesome and rad. And, <laughs> and I, I think that's actually part of the dinner conversation. You right? Know, they're they're like, man, Hannibal's rad. And yeah. Hannibal, Hannibal's pretty rad. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> Thanks for killing the flutist. Right. <laughs> flautist. The flautist. Because it was so offensive. So we're going to wrap it up here. Ah. Uh, Next week, in. Podcast time podcast is time. Silence of Lambs. Yes. And I have a feeling we're going to be more positive. Yes. I have a feeling. A feeling. Just an inkling. <laughs> Honestly, I have one complaint with Silence of Lambs. That's it. Really? One. And we'll talk about that next week. All right. Yeah, I, don't it... wanna, I don't want to spend my entire complaint. Okay. All the cons. All one con. The long con. The long con. The long con. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on, on this episode. And yeah. I, there will probably probably be some James gum voice oh uh, boy i mean i may it's, do the whole it's podcast this, it, it's, in, in that voice oh so uncomfortable that's very uncomfortable it is it's really uncomfortable <laughs> but i guess if you have to i guess if there were ever a time where it fit <laughs> it, it would, would be fit appropriate because, it would be... because he does it a lot without it being appropriate i do i do oh it's, i know it's a thing <laughs> it should be your uh, answering message on your phone. Should, I actually would, made that would, comment. Would you leave a message? <laughs> yeah. it was, I'd leave where a message. did that come up? I that remember. was on, on Twitter, I think. <laughs> it was something I'd, you, I'd leave a good message. Yeah, you were doing it, and I was like, you should do that. It's like somebody's outgoing <laughs> voicemail message. So that, yeah. I just yeah. I just gave it to you. All you have to do is take this podcast right, and, right up there. and just. Would you leave a message? 
Oh dear. Right, and these exactly. Hard fuck me. <laughs> well, to be somebody's ringtone. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed last week's episode that we're recording next week about Manhunter, which I think was probably also a, a bit more uh, upbeat. And I don't positive. know. I bet I have a lot of complaints. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sure you do. A but lot but of I complaints. think it's going to be more balanced. Probably. In... I I have a feeling. I have a feeling Sean Coletti, who's going, who who was our guest last week, is going to ground us a little bit more. This is weird time. I know weird it's hard time. to talk about something that hasn't that happened hasn't happened yet. yet. But we'll we'll <laughs> leave it with Miko. Where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me at Technogatia on Twitter, Miko Technogatia on Facebook. Um, you can also find me at that same name at Google Plus if you still do that Nobody sort does of that. thing. No. I know. It's like, Google has disbanded. That? I realized I, I stopped Google saying Plus. it and I was like, I don't even think anybody does that anymore. I have some Google Groups. Mm-hmm. Well, Google Groups is different. Yeah, that's well, different. Well, it's through G Plus. Okay. Yeah. Like Hangout's really cool, but G Plus is kind yeah. of, I don't know, it fizzled. Um, I'll, uh, uh, Mika, um, now I threw myself off. <laughs> Well, you threw Google Plus in there. I, I don't know. know what that was about. Technogation.com. You can I'm, probably find you. Yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Technogation.com. And I'm also on Life at the Swing. So. <laughs> and Ophelia, how about you? I, Are you on Google Plus? <laughs> I am on Google Plus. I, I too Tesla. am on Google Plus. And they can find me at Ophelia Tesla on Twitter, Ophelia Tesla on uh, Facebook. Facebook. And at Ophelia Tesla at gmail.com. And you can find me at Cooper S. Beckett.com. Don't go to my Google Plus page. Really, there's nothing. There's, of, no, I don't of, there's nothing on mine Nothing either. of value it's there. Not, yeah. It's not worth going uh, to. At Cooper S. Beckett on Twitter and Cooper Beckett on Facebook. You can find us as a podcast at Eat the Rudecast, eattherudecast.com, and info at eattherudecast.com. I'm curious what our fact checkers are going to do with these episodes. I don't know if if there will be the passion. Yeah, that's true. There but might be some. There might be. Yeah. There, there might be. be some. I can't wait to read the comments for this. I hope there are some. <laughs> I hope so, too. Please, yeah. leave us comments with your thoughts. Yeah. And, and, and it might be all, okay, here's some positive things to say after. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> so you negative. guys forgot. Yes. Or you got this wrong. Or this is really how this is. Because as much as I try to research and remember, I don't have time between the time I see it to no. actually go back and look at every single detail so a lot of this is we're just based on memory of like a book we read a year ago that we do try to go back in but there's just not enough time between viewing and doing the podcast to fact check everything so thank you to all of you that take the time yes you know because i love to read that stuff i do love to read that stuff oh and don't forget our tumblr eat the rootcast.tumblr.com I forget because I don't use Tumblr and it still confuses me. <laughs> uh, Holding the tumbling tumbling. in their we, Tumblr. We also need to mention that the Twin Peaks podcast will be back probably around the beginning of 2016. And it's an amazing week because Twin Peaks is filming. Yes. There's actually David Lynch directing scenes from Twin Peaks right now. It's amazing. I never thought that would happen again. And looking at the photos, I just want to be there. Yeah. Well, it, it, without question, we now have to go to the R and R diner in Snoqualmie, and Project. get ourselves just, a damn good cup of coffee. Yeah, and some, I, I can't. I, some damn fine. I am just pot. just amazed that it's happening. Just, it's actually happening. Even if he quits now, there is something from Twin Peaks. That's the thing. There, we something. Just get something in the can before anything. You give it up. Just. Shelly serving a cup of coffee and then put it online and I'm happy. That's all I need. Just Shelly. I want Cooper. I want Dale Cooper. I don't need Shelly. Oh, come on. Everybody needs Shelly. We also want Dale Cooper, but everybody needs Shelly. Let's wrap it up because that's a whole different podcast. Yes. Whole different podcast. And then uh, Ashcast is uh, and and the Ashcast is coming. It's coming. We've we've got a lot coming. Coming We, We do. So thanks for joining us at the table. Hey, this is Dan Savage from the Savage Lovecast and Savage Love, and you're listening to a Swing Set podcast at Swing Set FM. <laughs>